in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, and worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. Just play the instrument softly. I want us to just meditate in one minute. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord. Extol Him. Let Him know He's the reason why you are not dead. Let Him know you are the reason, He's the reason why your life is the way it is for your mercy O oh God for your faithfulness for your kindness I want you to think of times when you were delivered whilst you were not even praying times when the mercies of God spoke for you hallelujah Please everyone, just whisper your gratitude to the Lord. Sometimes we get so familiar. The worship team just led us through a session that I don't just want us to come out of casually. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's my song to you. Thank you. Thank him. You will be arrogant if there's nothing to say thank you to him for. Lord, you have been faithful faithful great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness it's morning by morning new mercies I see all I Hands have provided. Hold on. Take note of what provided it. Thy hands has provided. Not my gifts have provided. All that I needed 
thy hands has provided. Great is thy, thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great Lord of on Christ the solid rock I stand truly all on the ground is sinking sand all on the ground is sinking sand oh For your and mercy, you told me to. Jesus, we are calling your name so that the nations will not confuse who is the doer of these things. It is possible for your people to believe Joshua Selman is the doer. It is possible for your people to believe it is the wisdom of man. But we call that name Jesus. Jesus, the wonder walker. Jesus the healer Jesus the restorer Jesus the mighty one Jesus the redeemer Jesus the baptizer Jesus the imparter what's that song take it higher for me just one more song and then we'll sit down you have captured my heart consume my heart with your love we're singing this to jesus a love song you have captured my heart consume my heart my heart with your love koinonia lift your voice lift your hands and let's sing this song to him my heart Consume my heart with your love. If all I say is Jesus, say you are captured. My heart, consume my heart. Yes, the part of the song I love. If all I say is Jesus, say your name. If all I say is Jesus, Jesus. If all I say is Jesus, all I say is Jesus, all I say is Jesus, the Savior, the Healer, Jesus, that's more than enough, the Living One. Somebody say, if all I say is Jesus, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. If all I say is Jesus, if all I say is Jesus, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. I want you to just whisper that name to him. Let the nations hear you say it. Some of you have not called that name in a long time. You have called talent. You have called gifts. You have called money. 
you have called men but you've forgotten you've even called God but you've not called Jesus let your spirit get used to that name again the name that is given unto men by which men are saved soteria healed that's changed that's the name that heals cancer that's the name that delivers the name of the Lord the name of the Lord is a strong tower the name of the Lord is not the identity of a God is a strong tower the name of the Lord is a strong tower dependable reliable hallelujah jesus son of god i believe in you just play it lightly i believe in you the meeting is already on this is the person we introduced there at night jesus son of god I believe in you. I Hallelujah. Believe Listen. You. There is Jesus the footballer. There is Jesus the activist. There is Jesus the Mexican. So that we don't mix this thing. The, we are talking about the Son of God. They called Paul and, and Barnabas. They said one was Zeus and Hermes. They were in the similitude of sons of God. But he said, I saw the fourth man in the fire. And his fashion was like the son of God. Like the son of God. Let me tell you the truth. Don't you ever think we are wasting our time. If, if you come into God's presence, the protocol is that in all your ways, you must acknowledge don't you ever call acknowledging him a waste of time i believe in you let's just sing it one more time to the glory of your name jesus son of god i believe in you tonight lord be glorified in this place we hand over this meeting tonight lord there are sick people in this place trusting you for miracles there are oppressed people trusting you for breakthroughs who but you is able to wipe the tears of men who but you is able to bring your word with power we have acknowledged you before the nations let them know unashamedly that jesus is the doer of everything that happens in this house he is the healer the restorer the changer the transformer jesus the merciful jesus the judge jesus the just jesus the faithful jesus the provider we acknowledge you tonight spirit of the living god you have come as a representation of that glorious presence we ask oh god that you will bless your people let this not be a ritual a waste of time in the name of jesus christ hallelujah you see brothers and sisters when we do these things it's not an invention of man to run a service everything that is of god god does not leave men to guess how to do it there is a pattern are we together your own is to discover that pattern and foolishly sometimes childlikely walk in it results are for children in the kingdom those who can be childlike enough and say lord if a dance is the secret to this breakthrough i will dance oh if my tears is the secret i will cry mm. if it takes my worship i will give it 
if it takes my obedience i will give this this human invention will never give us the kind of results we are looking for he said let the little children come to me he said and do not forbid them for for such in other words that is the template that is the state it takes to receive from god you see the miracles that happen in this ministry when i sit down and i listen to the testimonies let me tell you this i am as not necessarily surprised but i am as blessed as those who are listening i also come looking forward to hearing what god has done because let me tell you something god doesn't have an advisor so when we come to him we we wait to see his wisdom what he has done and he's doing in the life of men nicodemus came to jesus in john chapter 3 by night he said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god he said for no man that means this result is not in the realm of men no man can do this thing however if god be with that man then it can be possible so the secret is god we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man no man can cause the barren to have a child no man can cause hiv to go brothers and sisters if it was easy even herbalists would not be looking for customers as as fetish as it is they too they are trying So when you see us worship him like this and sometimes do foolish things, you see people rolling, that's how it is. So that's the ancient secret. Stupid people in his presence who do foolish things, foolish enough for them to fail. And he picks them up. Because you see, when you declare to God that you don't have any other option, you put pressure on his integrity. And you commit him. Hallelujah. If this is all we do this service to just sing and dance and roll I tell you we can roll from left to right and that's how someone will be rolling his reproach away never participate when you are in a service and there's a time for extreme worship especially when God by his sovereign hand begins to extend there is a way you know that this one is no longer what was rehearsed this is God extending the spirit of god is now coming in because he knows what you are looking for and he's directing you on the path to get it the flesh will fight because your reputation will come in the flesh will fight because you say i'm tired oh, bring the rema god is not in this place as a tenant he's here as the lord the master the owner the guide we only follow unashamedly hallelujah praise the lord god bless you and the lord honor you please sit down we're going to be very brief tonight tonight i want to minister to people um so i'll be very i'll just wrap up the gift of the spirit very quickly i sensed a very strong grace to minister to people and that's what i want to do um very briefly we'll just wrap it up and so I, I want it to be very very sensitive I want to bring out a prophetic word that the Lord gave me listen this is especially please listen this was on Tuesday 9 24 a.m. in the morning Tuesday 17th this is what the Lord told me and listen especially worshipers it says restore the ministry of the stringed instrument restore the ministry of the stringed instrument i called them and i said you should get me a guitar restore the ministry of the stringed instrument there is a move of god that the stringed instrument will bring this is what god told me restore the ministry of you see this thing you see you people don't have an acoustic guitar here bring it Jesus we lift up your name please quickly Jesus we lift up your name Jesus we lift up your name Jesus we lift up your name 
hallelujah now please look up you see this thing you see is not an instrument it's a formula spiritual things spiritual things are formulas the clash of the symbol is a formula the keyboard and the sound that comes out is a formula the string instrument was a mystery david understood he said praise him with the ten stringed instrument are we together yes there is a sign that i can give you because i've not taught you to understand the meaning you would think i'm talking nonsense but the person i've trained to discern i can tell a jimmy every time you hear ha ha it means stand up you will not stand up because you don't understand so while you are playing the guitar your mind is unfruitful but your spirit in connection with the holy spirit understands the exact communication there was a move of god in this city that this instrument brought everybody was learning it whether they knew it or not they were not learning it by skill they were moved holy men were moved by the spirit to help him introduce a thing you see let me tell you we must be like the sons of Issachar we must sustain an understanding to know when the spirit of God is moving in a certain way and this is what the Lord spoke to me on Tuesday I asked them I said you guys should look for a guitar quickly and bring it set this up and play something play minus where's David Dam? just or anybody just sit down let it let it join what we are doing and just play this he said restore the ministry of the stringed instrument the ministry that psalmistry the hallmark of psalmistry was not singing it was the stringed instrument there was something that david played it was a language that the demons understood and they left the lord told me there is a move of the spirit that this stringed instrument will bring so wherever you have kept your guitar dust it even if it's three keys you can learn sit in the night and just play and sing and let songs come from the spirit there are no songs you will teach anybody you will even forget it the songs are for the lifetime of your worship at that moment when the worship is over you won't remember the song again there were realities captured from the spirit to help you take you see let's understand what the spirit is saying because when god is speaking like this there is an intention so he tells you by his spirit this is what i want to do this is how i want to move like i want to come to your house and i tell you that that I, I want to come to your house and you hear me telling you that i want to eat rice and chicken i have told you what i want to it is left for you to honor me you can decide to cook yam and say i i made up my mind to, your cooking rice is a sign that you honor me because i told you this is what i want there is a move of the spirit i say it again there are nations over 45 47 nations hearing us following us i'm saying this to all it doesn't matter what time zone and what nation there is a move of the spirit that the stringed instrument will bring the grace that was on miriam it was miriam that wrote that song on the stringed instrument that i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously to the point that the bible even told us in revelations that we will sing the songs of moses moses was not a musician but there was an order of the spirit there was something let me tell you the spirit of prophecy is one of the mysteries that are tied to the string instrument he said bring me a mistrel and while he played the hand of god came upon him and he said you shall not see wind you shall not see rain you shall not see wind you shall not see rain you shall not see wind where's the bidam he's gone he's not around just play up not you shall not see wind he's called the god of jeshurun it's a name not many people know the god that rides upon the wings he writes remember that when the angel came in the days of samson menoah he set a sacrifice it was through the sacrifice that the angel rose and went 
there are healings there are miracles i'm going to round up on the gift of the spirit but i want you to be sensitive god wants to do something hallelujah god wants to do something any of the overflows it doesn't matter where just be sensitive just be sensitive be sensitive be sensitive i'm seeing like a crown of fire this is what i'm seeing coming on people's heads inside outside i'm seeing like a crown this is what the lord is showing me and this is taking people to another dimension the lord is saying you have encompassed this level it's time for you to be open to a new dimension you will never be the same never be the same it is by the spirit by the spirit there are limitations that has kept you this thing is like an enthronement it's not everybody but there are few people it's for you that's why you came for the meeting is a ranking in the spirit something is being deposited in your spirit man that will give you capacity let's just flow with the spirit Adonai 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 there is no one like you Zion's king incense rise hearts resound Adonai 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 Hallelujah 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 I'm seen like a knife Please just allow me to do my stupid Is, is it alright if I just flow in the spirit Is that okay I'm seen like a knife A knife And this is like deliverance for families I'm seen like a Not a sword A knife A knife and God is saying he's bringing to end captivity captivity over families he's bringing to end it doesn't matter how long it is it's like a knife a knife is not warfare a knife is sacrifice God is saying there's something you have done your sacrifice has risen like an incense to the heavens and God is responding to it tonight sacrifice 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 i'm still seeing this knife everywhere overflow one two around everywhere god is visiting families there is something about your prayer you have been praying for months lord will you not arise and god says i am still the god of jeshurun the one that arises on the wings of the wings the god of jeshurun Adonai, Adonai, of Israel. Adonai, Adonai, there is no king just like you, rich and powerful of love, majestic throne of Zion. King, incense rise, hearts be sound. Adonai, Adonai, Adonai. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer and then we'll sit down. Hallelujah. I'm seeing horses, chariots, chariots running, and the Lord is saying He's bringing His word to pass over people's lives this is not everybody but i'm seeing chariots chariots and i speak it by the spirit i speak it by the spirit i'm seeing chariots and god is saying he's bringing his word 
is, is a chariot. Remember, there is one that rides upon the horse in Revelations. He said his name is the word of God. The one upon the horse, given a name that no man knew. He had a name written upon his thigh. Fire came out from him and devoured them. He said his name is the word of God. We release performance. We release performance. Grace for performance. I don't know what God has told you. But we release the grace for performance. Grace for performance. There is a grace that reveals things. But there is a grace that makes what is revealed happen. There is a grace that reveals things. But there is a grace that makes what is revealed happen. Grace for performance. Grace for performance. Hallelujah. Please sit down if you can. Let's just be sensitive. Whatever position, just sit somewhere and let's just talk. God is doing something heavy this night. God is doing something heavy this night. I don't know who this is for, but the Lord is saying, I'm rolling away your reproach. I'm rolling away your reproach. I'm rolling away your reproach. Someone's reproach is rolling. I'm rolling away your reproach. I'm rolling away your reproach. That's what God is saying. I'm rolling away your reproach. I keep speaking like this because of what I'm seeing. I'm rolling away your reproach. 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 I'm seeing a family, no marriage. I'm rolling away your reproach. I'm rolling away your reproach. Please help them. I'm rolling away your reproach. I'm seeing someone you have spilled over like twice. I'm rolling away your reproach. The Lord is saying, I'm rolling away your reproach. You may not see wind, brothers and sisters. You may not see rain. But my God is rolling away your reproach. Don't ask how it will happen. I told you it's called the God of Jeshurun. Don't ask how it will happen. No. Don't ask how it will happen. Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. For with men it is impossible. But with God, with God, with God. When you bring God inside the equation, everything changes. Everything. Everything changes. Hallelujah. Please be seated if you can. Ah. When the waters is stirred like this, it takes an extra grace to now settle down and teach. We must learn to be sensitive. When God comes like this, it's not the display of the anointing of a man. No. No. It is the desperation of the needs of God's people rising from heaven. God is a God that cares. But until he finds vessels that can allow him space, it will look as if he does not care. Help us, Holy Spirit. Please sit down. Hallelujah. Jesus. You can find someone and sit, David. Just strum them and play it. And then um, let's see how far God will take us tonight. Amen. 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 Where did we stop? Let me talk about the interpretation of tongues. We are still on the gift of the Spirit. Why am I teaching the gift of the Spirit? Because they are the equippings of the Spirit to individuals and to the body to help us to be effective. Zeal is not enough in serving God. 
we must have the empowerment and saying you are anointed is generic the anointing is like saying you have food in your house food can be anything the gift of the spirit defines the operations of god i already told us that there are not nine gifts of the spirit the bible never records that there are nine gifts of the spirit paul gave that theological classification the whole theme of um first corinthians 12 13 14 is found in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 40 that all things be done decently and in order so paul was creating an apostolic system to coordinate the operation of the gifts so that it will edify the body and then not destroy the people but he never taught us that there were nine gifts the classification was just a theological guide to help the people the gifts of the spirit are as vast as his person there are dimensions you will see operating that you may not exactly find it in the bible there and if you do not have this understanding you can reject it in a bid to not come under the influence of a spirit of course theologically speaking we can agree that there are nine gifts as revealed from scripture but when you walk with god you will find out that there are operations there are administrations and there are diversities so paul told us that the interpretation of tongues i will run very quickly that's where we stopped the interpretation of tongues is the ability to translate divine utterances into an earthly recognizable language for the purpose of reception and edification the ability to translate divine utterances the ability to translate divine utterances into an earthly recognizable language for the purpose of reception and edification it was paul in first corinthians chapter 13 who taught he said though i speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels so he lets us know that there are languages the word tongue is an ancient english word for language there are languages that are given to men Igbo, yoruba hausa you know and all of that but there are languages of angels they, they are heavenly communications that are out of the scope of the natural man and there are times that god grants people access to communicate these languages are we together that's what the bible calls the gift of diverse kinds of tongues we settled that already that the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not the same as the gift of tongues as a prayer language no the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is prophecy in a heavenly language in an unknown language a spiritual communication that is prophetic in nature to the body god speaking to people through a vessel in a language that is not known by the communicator and this gift the interpretation of tongues must come upon the same communicator or another person to translate it into an earthly language so that the people can say amen let it come we receive we believe we receive we release our faith this has happened to many of us while we pray it's just because it sounds like your tongues for prayer so you will not know the difference but when you begin to grow to be spiritual you will get to a point where when you are praying you know that this is not your prayer language of tongues again this is an intercourse happening between you and the spirit It's a language many times you will find yourself interpreting it by yourself like prophecy or you will find somebody who is not even connected to your prayer shouting your answer somewhere on the floor while you are there praying someone is rolling near a roof or a door somewhere prophesying your answer are we together kenneth e hagen walked very lavishly in all the nine gifts as we know and many times in his meeting he walked very strongly much more than any man of god i know in the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues you watch his materials and you see him many times prophesying in fact he was so meticulous in his communication there are times that he would talk and stop himself you say no this is not consistent with the spirit of god rebuke himself and start again look for another tongues the gift of interpretation of tongues it is needed there are communications let me tell you the truth there are many things god has been telling us but we do not sustain this gift 
that's why we do not understand the bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches that means the spirit is speaking but his system of communication among others is the ability to grant you access to revelations through a coded language that is heavenly we see an example of that in the days of belshazzar the bible says while they were celebrating in the temple with the vessels that they captured from the house of god all of a sudden a finger wrote on the wall mene mene tekel ufesen it was a language that was not known they used divination astrology they could not figure it out and when daniel came he looked at it and then he sustained this ability now he didn't know that this was the, the gift of the spirit did not start working in the new testament they were coordinated and theologically explained in the new testament the gift of the spirit have been as long as human vessels gave god room to manifest so daniel came and by this gift he said he looked at it and said mene mene oh king this is what god is saying whether they understood or not god will still punish the king for sure he was just informing them oh king you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting this day your kingdom is taken from you that was the speakings of god but it took a man who had this understanding to communicate it the next gift quickly prophecy prophecy first corinthians chapter first corinthians let me open there so that i'll be sure that fourteen now first corinthians fourteen there's one verse okay verse three first corinthians fourteen and verse three paul still speaking he said but he that prophesieth speaketh on speaketh unto men to what edification and exhaustion and comfort he that prophesies he that prophesies speaks to men your prophecy should do three things number one edification building exhortation and then comfort what is prophecy the supernatural ability to reveal events informations the supernatural ability to reveal events and information prophecy is always futuristic in context except where it is a declaration of the word of god over a situation the manifestation of prophecy the character of the prophetic is such that the communications are of things that have not physically manifested yet are we together now when it is past and present that's the word of knowledge the gift of the word of knowledge oh pastor alpha this happened today this is what god is doing now that's word of knowledge this is what god is going to do tomorrow by this time tomorrow that was not word of knowledge that was prophecy are we together now now let me tell you this every prophet everybody called into the prophetic office must have this gift at work in him but not everybody manifesting the gift of prophecy is a prophet are we together here is the confusion the fact that i'm seeing things and saying things does not mean i am i can be called into the prophetic office for a long time and never see anything and never foretell yet i am a prophet an example enoch was a prophet there's not much we see about enoch's prophecy john the baptist was not just a prophet the greatest of all the prophets until christ yet he did very little of revelation there are very few times we just see him acknowledging and say behold the lamb of god who takes the sin of the world and said the one who trained me in the wilderness told me the one upon whom i see the spirit descending not much was said in terms of you know prophecy to nations like jeremiah and the rest are we together prophecy is a very powerful gift now i know that there has been an abuse of the prophetic you know like um i don't know who was sharing testimony here 
there are marriages that have broken because of prophets and prophecies there are individuals whose lives have been destroyed because of prophecy and all of that there are people who were doing well until a prophetic word came into their lives is that true they made them leave their wives leave their husband give away their children sell their property give their car and all kinds of things there must be a balance in the communication of the prophetic now i don't have time to now tell you the history of the prophetic in nigeria and africa specifically but i just want you to know something about prophecy everybody listen prophecy is very important for the end time now it is true that there are imbalances it is true that there is a lot of falsehood there are people who have developed such a resentment for prophecy justifiable re resentment because of the way it has been misused and has been merchandised people have extracted money from people in the name of the lord people have forced people into marriages that are not the will of god because of all kinds of hilarious visions and dreams that came from everybody match make people into doom just because of this you see that the bible tells us certain things about prophecy we must take note of number one is that we see in part and we prophesy in part this is a very big revelation the most accurate of all of us still sees in part and prophesies in part number two the word of god has given to us the bible calls it a more sure word more dependable more reliable meaning if i never have an individual speak a prophetic word over my life and i can have access to the word the word of god will carry out that prophetic ministry over my life this is very important number three this the prophetic is the office with the highest propensity of falsehood you hardly hear false apostles you hardly hear false evangelists you hardly hear false teachers false pastors but you hear in the bible repeated false prophets again and again and again because of the inclination with the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit is a is a realm like the physical realm the realm of the spirit is not heaven that you are open to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are open to heaven any spirit that can access the realm of the spirit has an advantage over this realm including that of a herbalist so that someone is communicating a, a divine information that is out of the scope of the physical realm does not mean it is of god this should not create cynicism that's why every true manifestation of prophecy must be within the boundaries of the word of god are we together watch this come pastor alpha if I stand and God opens my eyes please listen or the Holy Spirit speaks to me or I have a vision prophetic now and I see Pastor Alpha having an accident are we together now or in my vision for instance I see Pastor Alpha beating his lovely wife now you see I have received that my renewal is what will be responsible for the way to be transferred I judge what I see and I know that it is not consistent with the character of God are we together now my understanding the word of God and understanding the nature of God will be the template I will use in interpreting that prophecy you don't expect me to look and say pastor alpha and Awao, so this is how you are beating your wife no 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 automatically I know that God is revealing to me the plot of the enemy over his life so the nature of my speaking to him will be such that this is what the devil wants to do but then victory i don't have to see victory it is part of being a word addict to prophesy the victory and say i see it but this addition is consistent with the word of god if all i say is madam next week you are going to receive a beating from your husband if it does not happen i'm not a man of god you see i may have seen correctly but my lack of understanding the word of god has misinterpreted it and by so doing you have misrepresented god over this situation am i fake no am i renewed no and it's misrepresenting god every manifestation of the prophetic must be 
with a very thorough understanding of not just the word of God but the character of God what God can do and what God cannot do are we together now yes there are things I will see about pastor alpha I will not even need to tell him you see that my understanding of God is and my knowledge of God and the gravity of what I have seen is such that if I tell Pastor Alpha the nature of what I've told him will occupy his mind and put fear and so I judge what I'm about to say on the strength of certain things God has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind number two Philippians 4 verse 8 says finally brethren whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are true my introducing that word has a propensity to corrupting his work with God so I will reserve that prophecy and intercede for him if in the place of intercession the Holy Spirit beckons on me to still reveal to him then I can come and reveal to him in such a way that I exalt the power of God above that situation interpretation interpretation is as dangerous wrong interpretation is as dangerous as error and lies listen i can be here right now are, are you are you getting blessed i can be seated here right now and all of a sudden god will open my eyes watch this i can see a jimmy in a vision and see pastor alpha's wife and then see two of them holding a child did i see correctly yes now you look at this complicated vision i i coined a vision like this for on purpose now what is this mystery i'm seeing a Jimmy is married with his wife and his children. Now I'm seeing a Jimmy standing, Pastor Alpha's wife standing, and they are holding a child. Let me tell you what a very foolish man of God will do. You will bring that thing like that with the heat that it came with from the realm of the spirit and tell a Jimmy's wife, I say, hey, Madam, just many things are happening. That's what I what are you doing you are destroying someone's marriage it's not consistent with the will of god are we seeing now you are planting distrust between pastor alpha and his wife are we together now when you see a thing like that your first assignment is to be able to judge by the operation of the word what mean at these things it could be similarity in visions it could mean similarity in operation that there is a gift that baby being a representation of a dimension of the spirit that is being birthed that is similar to a Jimmy and the wife are you seeing that now but because you have not taken out time to judge you just say everything and destroy people's lives another example let me have a lady come my dear my come let's assume that these people are a wonderful couple husband and wife are we together they came for koinonia and now let's assume i'm a foolish man of god and i have seen this kind of thing watch this i'm not i'm not being cynical you know that i love the body of christ and all i'm just trying to give us understanding because this is a very serious thing it has destroyed people's lives now this is husband and wife do you know watch this god can open my eyes and i can look at this lady in the spirit and see how it haunts yes the nature of spiritual interpretation is such that you see the realm of the spirit you know how you watch cartoon or some of these scientific movies that's how the realm of the spirit really works i can look and see this woman with horns and just tap the husband and say oh god you mean how long did you say you have been with this woman and i just clap my hands and i say that you arrived here and this woman didn't kill you the innocent woman is standing and saying i love this man with all my heart what is this nonsense you are saying are you seeing now now the man of god truly saw a horn and he's saying i know what i saw this woman is a witch oga your whole business and your life has not been working and it is true your life has not been working but because this person does not understand the character and the operation of the kingdom his interpretation is faulty are we together now and then i now tell him mr man the best thing to do is to do what abraham did to hagar are we together now i would justify that because that story is in the bible i told you that the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want 
that it is in the bible does not mean it is of god the part in the bible that resonates with god's character is the word of god are we together now so i look at this what god may be revealing to me listen is that there is a problem it is true that there may be a problem in this woman's life it could be hereditary it could be an operation of darkness that satan is trying to bring he may not even have anything to do with her directly that has an effect on his marriage but because i do not understand it i destroy this dear lady's life embarrass her in the presence of everybody a business partner let's assume she's doing poultry a business partner that wants to make order of 500 chickens will cancel that thing after that prayer why will you want a witch to to bring chickens for you so that you're, you're, you you understand that kind of thing it's not easy to be a witch let me tell you this let me tell you this listen 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 don't go and study occultism but let me be honest with you the condition to be a witch this witch that we talk about and with witchcraft and wizardry in its in its most acute form is not something a human being can just become like that the condition to be a witch is the condition to receive the mark of the beast please help the person under the anointing so this dear lady now imagine that she's your choir mistress and you are a choir member will you listen to her again when you went for the program and you saw what happened and the worst part of it is if i now touch her and she falls down ah that's it that's the final proof that this woman is a, and then the devil now starts using her face to oppress members are you seeing now just like some of you see the faces of innocent people and get up and hate them for nothing and the devil plays with your not understanding the word of god it's a rightly dividing the word jesus looks at peter watch this peter just finished confessing that he was the son of god and then peter talks to jesus no 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 will you go to the cross and he looks at him and says get thee behind me satan and peter is looking at him and jesus understood that if he left peter like that peter may not have been an apostle peter would have been depressed to death after three years of working with you you call me a devil and say no 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 peter let me explain to you that's what every man of god should do now that you have rebuked because of your spirit intelligence must come in he said satan desired to sift you satan and you are two different people desire to sift you like wheat all that shout was not hatred for you i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren are you seeing that now that's why you can see people manifest sometimes they are manifesting receiving impartations other times they are manifesting and demons and, and all of that we thank god for that spiritual intelligence here that's why people can get up manifesting and not feel bad and not feel like the whole world is against them are we together now thank you god bless you prophecy must submit to the word of god for it to be accurate when prophecy becomes emotional when it becomes cultural when it becomes just a raw delivery of everything seen in the realm of the spirit it becomes a weapon of mass destruction the purpose of prophecy is for edification for exhaustion exhortation and for comfort prophecy does not condemn prophecy does not destroy even when god spoke to the prophets in the old testament he would always tell them what to do Nineveh, i'm about to destroy you people and this is what will happen however they declared a fast and the mercy of god came in remember the bible says the lord is full of grace the lord is gracious and compassionate right full of love i mean how did he put it now um rich in love the lord is merciful and compassionate he's rich in love his mercies are new every morning 
those of us here who are seeing visions having dreams document these things and seek guidance first especially when you are beginning to walk in the gifts of the spirit be careful don't authoritatively go and meet people they have a lot of respect for you and they will listen to everything i am careful when i speak to people because even when i joke they don't take it lightly i can be joking with somebody and say ah god bless you and the person wants to kneel down and i'm saying i'm a human being this is not anointing i'm joking just joking with you and you see the thing about the anointing is every time there is a demand whether you are joking or not that person can now fall down now embarrass me there and make it look as if you know i hardly have people to play with it's a very this this anointing sometimes is a very your life can be very very lonely someone sees you are trying to smile and the person is already believing that maybe it's, it's a word from god i am a human being jesus ate corn in the farm on sunday remember jesus was with a woman and they were talking i mean please and i think some of us is some of us men of god that make this happen you know the way we spiritualize it and make it look as if you are in the spirit every time it's a lie it's a lie it's a lie bible say walking in the spirit yes but it's not in the character of you can't smile you can't do anything you feel bad if if i am angry and i slap david dam's head i should just say sorry i shouldn't make it look as if it's the holy spirit that made me do it no this is i'm a human being i was carried away i got emotional and touched his head i'm a human being jesus was angry did he say it was the holy spirit who made him angry no prophecy but we need it now the last thing i'll say about prophecy before we move on is the fact that you must never resent it the resentment we have for prophecy we have mixed the baby and the bad water and thrown it away there are two dimensions of prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy there is the creative dimension of prophecy the revelatory dimension has to do with insight and information about people, situations, nations like Jeremiah. The creative dimension of prophecy is when you have the word of God alongside the grace for performance. When the prophet said by this time tomorrow, he was not revealing, he was creating. Are we together now? We must desire it. The church that rejects the prophetic is going to be in trouble. Prophecy is very important. A man's life can change overnight because of prophecy. We have, there are many of us, if only we embrace the ministry of prophecy, we would have left this realm. Left the current dimensions that we are, we are in. But we've been grounded because of a cynicism. The moment you see someone saying the Lord is ah, please all you this stupid especially if he's a young man that's why they see everybody they mix join all of us together and just throw all of us and make it look as if we're all demons no no hallelujah nothing happens in the earth realm until prophecy announces it nothing happens in the earth realm until prophecy announces it nothing happens in the earth realm until prophecy announces it prophecy is not just a revelation it's an authorization for spiritual things to find expression all through scripture you see angels bringing messages and heralding them before those occurrences begin to happen let's go to the next gift faith there is the law of faith an operation of faith there is the spirit of faith there is the gift of faith what is the gift of faith an unusual ability to believe god an unusual ability to believe god that is higher and greater than your current world level higher and greater than your level of spiritual exposure there are times because you see generally speaking your faith level is proportionate to the level of the word of god that is in you your level of understanding of scripture and the ways of god is commensurate to your faith 
there are certain challenging situations in your life in leadership there are times that you need to bring certain realities from the realm of the spirit that is higher and bigger than your personal work with god at that point you don't just need the law of faith you need the gift of faith the gift of faith is always short-lived because under that influence of the gift of faith anything uttered will come to pass it is the reason why god does not leave people to work with it for a long time because our unrenewedness will destroy people's lives the gift of faith is the operation of the faith of god not faith in god the very faith of god working in a human vessel the faith that created the heavens and the earth not the word of god the very faith of god an impartation of that faith to help you command realities that otherwise will not come that's why the gift of faith works peri with the working of miracles there are certain situations that are challenging higher than you do not even understand the dynamics of that result as it is but the gift of faith comes upon you the character of the gift of faith is unusual courage and audacity unusual courage it has happened to many of us in the place of prayer fear takes you to the place of prayer and you are praying and prophesying praying and all of a sudden an ability comes upon you and you begin to speak and say audacious things not even caring who is listening later when you hear what you say even you you are embarrassed by it it's a sign that you are not the one who said it i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ tomorrow by nine o'clock a helper is appearing and your neighbor is watching you say hey, hey, hey i just gave this guy one spaghetti and this that's not you because I, let me tell you how you know that's not you by 12 30 you will sit down and say hey, why did i now embarrass myself you call it an embarrassment because your your original faith level has returned now and you are seeing that that faith level cannot accommodate that level of miracle but god had to move through you and truly you will see that a miracle will happen that's why you give him glory when it happens when they say man of god you quickly turn and say god is you one of the hallmark of the apostolic ministry is the gift of faith the gift of faith daring things by the gift that's why those who are called in the apostolic ministry if they don't allow the holy spirit work on them usually they are very very arrogant very outspoken sometimes very sarcastic it's a side effect that comes with the office your intimacy with the holy spirit is a secret to correcting it so that i work in an apostolic office and i am arrogant and sarcastic and outspoken and some of these wrong things i may say it is how it is no your work with the holy spirit was designed to correct it it's like you are cooking in the kitchen the moment you put i i don't i don't have any business with the kitchen but i'm just saying what i remember i know that when you put palm oil in a hot pot what happens there's a side effect the whole kitchen and maybe the neighboring environment it can be choking does that mean you should stop the cooking people are hungry they are waiting for the meal but then you have to create a way of managing it so most times before women will start they will do it outside or they will open the window in advance that's how you work you must create a system with god to cover for the side effect that that operation comes you don't choke people and say you are you are boiling palm oil no if i keep insulting pastor alpha stupid you are crazy you are you are you are, you are a stupid person and then i say it is the anointing no it is not the anointing it is the effect of the anointing um yes but then the unrenewed part of me mixing with the anointing is what produces that outcome it can be corrected hallelujah that's why when paul finished giving us an exegesis of all the gifts of the spirit he said i show you a more excellent way a more excellent way of administering the gifts that if they do not work by love you are not operating the more excellent way are we together every one of us here will require this gift if you must get results in your life 
a day will come when your faith level cannot take the kind of miracles you need the urgency around it will require the gift of faith there are times you see during the miracle service i'm just walking and looking at people and i know that ah this situation is very challenging sometimes the people are waiting for me to come please help that person under the anointing and then the person can just whisper sorry sir i have hiv and this hiv self is not just me me my wife and my child you don't have to tell everybody now you are standing there or someone is saying he has tuberculosis and he's coughing in in your coughing before your face and you are inhaling the thing if this thing is not working in you you do this for five years the probability of catching tuberculosis is 100 percent 100 percent that's why we tell people to walk with god before they begin to move in certain levels of ministry it's not pride you will if i've been faking this thing by now you will see it it would destroy you one day because you are laying hands on people it's not this laying on of hands is not something you do just because you are anointed that's why sometimes you see me pray for these people before we allow them to go it's not it's not some man of god thing you are contending spirits you can carry problems you have no business carrying leave someone land upon your life you finish that service you go back have you not seen people who minister to the sick and what was on them the person went back to sleep um, one leg did not he didn't he could not lift one leg again that boomerang effect i believe in the gift of faith let me submit to you that where god has brought us by his grace in this ministry is an operation of the gift of faith there was a year let me tell you a little story there was a year when early that year before koinonia will start god gave an instruction that we should carry every one naira in this ministry and sow it as a seed one week to koinonia resuming i can't remember which of the years was that everything i said god everything now let me tell you, you better make sure that that gift is working in your life because that's suicidal not that you should carry a sizable seed and go and give empty everything close everything and i did it foolishly and stupidly i submit to you in less than seven days more than 10 times that amount return it's faith you need it some of us right now you wrote your exams humanly speaking you are not going to graduate one you wrote nonsense two you didn't finish you need the gift of faith you need the gift of faith are we together yes there are wicked supervisors ready to make sure they frustrate you how about getting a job you keep carrying your certificate to everybody say sorry we don't need what you studied and at a point you feel bad and say is it my fault that i studied this one day while you are praying the gift of faith comes on you and you make declarations by the spirit all of a sudden someone calls you you need it it is given to help believers our families many of us our families are in a mess we need the operation of this gift to correct things you see that lady that testified that was what was working in her the dear lady that said she went home gather your relatives what if it doesn't work do you know what it, you can be stupid by yourself but to gather relatives who are not born again and then it doesn't work Abba. the gift of faith when you have plan b it is your faith when there is no plan b it is the gift of if i perish that's what was on esther when she was on her way going to meet ahasuerus the destiny of the nation of israel was at stake and she entered if i perish ask her to say it after that time she won't be able to say it again hallelujah that was the grace that was at work in moses when moses went before god he said why are you crying to me moses said what is all this two million people are shouting these guys are going to kill me you don't know how hard how how hard hardened and hearted they are and god says go and and part the rivers theologically historically speaking um historians tell us that it's not like the river parted and they told people now walk 
do you know the miracles that happen there even if the river parted there's going to be space on the ground are you going to jump down won't you die so the ground had to lift and come up to where they were for them to be able to walk through it and moses took his rod stood before two point something million people and said people the egyptians you see today that's the spirit of faith i speak to someone or oh, the egyptians you see today in the name of jesus christ after this meeting you will see them no more forever i say it again the egyptians you see today in the name of the lord jesus christ whose faith is at work here you will see them no more after today please sit down the gift of faith a man of god true story many of you will know him pastor korede komaya um i think it was bishop aremu's wife bishop aremu's wife she, she do you know they have twins and she was sitting with the man's wife and then looked at him and said ah you said how many children do you have and she i think she had just maybe one or two then and she looked at her and carried her uh what is this, this thing ladies tie their head tie and threw it on her and said take twins joe that was it the woman got pregnant twins gave birth that's not guess that's not guess when you see it happen sometimes i see it happen i'm surprised somebody can come and while he's talking and giving every long explanation apostle this is happening it's like prophecy i don't even know when it comes out of my mouth i just say it is done go and you see the person living disappointed you didn't even wait for me to finish i struggled i joined the line i humbled myself what is all this let me express and then the person goes back and things change the gift of faith is powerful are we blessed the gift of healing jesus i wish i had time to dwell on this maybe we'll take another series next year what is notice that the bible does not say the gift of healing he said the gifts g-i-f-t-s the gifts of healing what is it the ability to bring physical and emotional healing to people the ability to supernaturally bring physical and emotional healing you know years ago i really used to laugh at white people when i see all of them every little thing they cry every little thing they cry how did you get here and she's trying to explain just that there was a delay with taxi and then she starts crying they give her a hunger like, what sort of human beings are this i mean just anything makes them cry men women but as i grew in leadership i found out that emotional brokenness is worse than physical sickness the bible says a broken spirit dry at the bones there is a way a man can be emotionally devastated and die not by any physical sickness are we together emotional wounds are created because of words and circumstances they are more hurtful if i slap you and the sign of my hand is on your face it won't reach two days that thing will disappear correct but if i speak something negative about your life you can hold that word for 10 years and it will not leave you is that true the same thing how many of you have seen people with diabetes and you see an injury that will not heal it looks like it will not and that's exactly what happens to the spirits of people hence the ministry of people like joyce mayer and all of this you can look at them and feel ah no falling down no shouting i tell you the truth they are doing a major healing ministry 95 percent of africans before age 15 have been raped by wicked words from the ones who call you stupid to the one who called you idiot to your teacher who said you will have a big head you are dull to the mistakes you made to the fact that you were the oldest person in your class baba class four you don't know those things were affecting you a broken spirit you get to school and everybody's harassing you people look at you and say i hope you know you're a very ugly lady i'm sorry i have to just tell you my mind and the person thinks he's being bold those that accumulation demon spirits find a safe haven in that mindset and it destroys you 
and you find out anything God tells you you just look at him and say God use somebody those kinds of words are reflections of emotions that have been broken that's why worship like this creates that kind of healing you can raise a song and while everybody is laughing only one person is crying that person is getting healed at the end of it is like you know how you bath someone just feels light feels i have been healed from this i have counseled people and i am amazed at the things people go through and yet they still smile and walk there are people if they give you half of the emotional load on their head it will kill you instantly yet they are carrying it and saying hallelujah praise the lord ah the bible says rejoice not over me my enemies there are many of our parents when they lost their last job they never got another one again do you know why because the way they disgraced them and drove them out of that company it was so embarrassing and they said i can't i can't do this to myself again sir but you're a phd holder no i rather remain poor after 10 years how about those who but please don't feel bad those who marriage did not work for have you seen people like that and after 20 years you tell them it's okay now i think you can get back i know okay maybe your wife died or something happened and they tell you look the memory is still as fresh as yesterday have you seen people say i will never forgive you till jesus comes that's what emotional devastation can do there are people here as i'm talking god is healing you from this because let me tell you it's a luggage oh i was raped when i was two years i was raped when i was five years the house boy that worked for us raped me some of us were raped by our own parents sadly are we together and you grow and those things are still in your mind i can never make it you wrote why 10 times jam 11 times there is no understanding of favor so every time we say god is favoring people you don't look and say is it me you are talking to no. healing if you are not healed and god ever gives you an opportunity to be a leader you will judge everything from the template of your emotional wounds if someone laughs at you you say why are you laughing at me because you remember that that's how they laughed at you to mock you the person was laughing rejoicing with you but your cynicism you see that your wife just looks and says, ah my husband my husband and say please i don't like disrespect I say, ah, my husband again i've told you this is how my mother did this is, uh, must everybody know i'm the last one it's not about that situation there is something that has created a wound in you are we together There are some of you they use all kinds of words you had nicknames ugly nicknames and cliches some of you used to urinate in secondary school or primary school although you were it was a situation that required prayer and the adults there did not have spiritual intelligence to help and this i remember that time they would gather the person who is easy himself and sing songs and dance dance around dance and the person who the person who stand like this with your bed sheet that you who urinated what a way of destroying people don't ever do that to anybody how about brothers that blast ladies you are not fine you are not this and they say i i i, I gave it to her well, how about the ladies that blast a guy she blasted him in 99 till now he has not approached any lady every time he wants to go that wound god is bringing deliverance in the name of jesus christ but there is a physical healing there is the physical healing the healing ministry is needed more than ever before i was listening to benny Hinn not too long before i came and you know i hear him read these healing scriptures and i am touched we need to bring the healing power of god back to the church i tell you this there's too much there is very little of genuine healing not everybody's in a wheelchair but let me tell you there are people who need physical healing physical healing how god acts chapter 10 and verse 38 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed healing oppressed healing oppressed every sickness is an oppression from headache to your hair falling to all of this i remember i think it was in mina or so when i saw a very touching miracle a gentleman that has never smelled anything in his life doesn't know how you put perfume he just looks at you you know what a bad way to live what of those who don't hear well what of those who don't see well all kinds of sicknesses the first time i would pray for a lady years ago and the lady told me she had no womb i don't mean something was wrong no womb anybody that doesn't believe in miracles don't argue with the person the day the doctor cannot help you i promise you you must believe i believe in the healing power of jesus or a robot will say this every day of his life i am called to bring the healing power of jesus to the nations he believed it are we together there are people here seated looking at me who have all kinds of things incurable diseases every time a medical predicament defies drugs and medical attention then there is a spirit behind it are we together now yes and let me say something about the gift of healing most people have been indoctrinated in the church to hate doctors and hate medicine i will never teach that you will never hear me teach that i believe in divine health i believe in all of this but day and night we are taking people to the hospital to take care of them we have lots of doctors here a few of them will be doctors by next week or week after next and all of that we we have a lot of our doctors yes you, you actually can clap i mean it's not all of them smiling already they will come and dance before god here to the shame of the devil so please don't get into this resentment i can't take drugs you are about dying just panadol will solve that problem now of course there are times that you stretch your faith if you stretch it and it doesn't seem to work take the panadol cure yourself and keep studying the word there is a realm of divine health i believe that are we together but we must never stigmatize people so you see people secretly buying drugs they buy malaria drugs they run and take injection for five days and come and hold the mic and say in the last 10 years i've not even taken paracetamol let's 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 be honest let's fear god jesus is called the great physician 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 say is there no balm in gilead praise god i believe in medicine and when you pray for people especially over a sensitive case don't stop them from taking their normal medication when they become healed medicine will confirm it are we together now especially for maybe hiv patients or people with some terminal diseases there are many pastors who have killed innocent people they prayed for the hiv patient for instance and said do you believe yes stop taking your antiretroviral dogs and the person was very fine but now after four or five months you find out that the person started emaciating and the person died when you pray for someone and it does not work please take the person to the hospital if you yourself are sick and you've prayed and prayed and nothing works you can still be declaring the word of god medicine is still a miracle you don't talk to the drug you swallow it the drug finds where your problem is the whole pharmacology behind that drug is a miracle so don't don't act as if you didn't tell the drug come to my ears you just swallowed it it's a miracle by god's grace we will never discourage people we have a first aid box as a ministry if someone collapses now under the anointing and all of that there is if he needs medical attention there are doctors here who will attend to him let's be responsible these are the things that try to make those who walk in power look like fools because we we keep killing people every day destroying people and not stopping you know stopping people from medical attention i don't do that
tonight i believe that god is going to bring his healing power again to someone i believe in the ministry of healing i have been a victim of sickness so i know the relevance of healing i've shared with you my testimony when i had a fungal infection that ate my head pastor completely ate everything here you won't see one and it was just wounds everywhere i know the rejection that sickness brings i buy puff puff for people they won't collect it because my hand touched it even if i washed it in their presence can stigmatize you how about the woman with the issue of blood there are people living examples like that i remember praying for a lady who would bleed non-stop for sometimes like three or four months this lady can stand and be dizzy and just collapse like pass out we need to bring the healing power of god to people we need to let them see the power of god in their lives the devil is afflicting people with all kinds of sicknesses and tonight in the name of jesus is someone's night the last gift of the spirit and then we will pray the walking of miracles what is the working of miracles the ability to bring about supernatural results supernatural occurrences that are above the laws of nature the ability to produce supernatural results above and beyond the laws of nature the working of miracle defies process there is no process with the working of miracles now life is a process but the working of miracles what happened in samaria was a working of miracles by this time tomorrow the economy of a nation will completely changed there are many of us who need miracles a healing is a miracle when it is instant when a healing is instant it's called a healing miracle miracles are not just limited to human bodies finances jesus performed that operation he said go and catch a fish open the mouth pick money out that's the working of miracles are we together now yes i believe in the working of miracles i've seen it happen in my life i've seen it happen in the ministry the multiplication of five loaf and two fish that was not just divine supply that was the working of miracles what of the the fish that they caught master we have toiled all night nevertheless at thy word and then he said cast your net to the right side and they caught so much fish they had to beckon on their partners what of ezekiel 37 restoration is a miracle bones that have gone and then the bible says something that always intrigues me when i read it it says bone was joined to his bone meaning no bone made a mistake every bone located the right one miracles someone is here and is in need of a miracle you are not sick in your body but there is a situation in your life that needs the intervention of god's hand if you go through the normal course of the law of process you may never be able to catch up restoration is one of those aspects in a man's life that requires the gift of the working of miracles and i will restore to you the years can years be restored i thought it's just material things that can be restored but god says no not with me when i can walk a miracle the bible talks about zion giving birth in one day that have you ever heard this he said as soon as zion travails she shall put forth her son let me tell you i want you to get ready for strange occurrences in your life things that will happen you will know that this is only god they will say but i know it took 10 years to build the house and he said my brother i was sitting down like this and a key came to me miracles the bible never said mary was pregnant for nine months no sir the angel never told mary according to the time of life it was never said that pregnancy was nine months miracles the nation of israel 430 years captivity 
in one night he said they chased them they didn't even allow their bread to rise they said please get out of this place are we together the lord has declared that this is a year of triumph let me tell you this i truly believe in restoration and i believe in speed pastor femi come pastor alpha come let me show you something very quickly and then we'll pray please stand here gentlemen just stand close to me watch this if pastor femi and pastor alpha are making progress in life this is them walking is that true and then something keeps pastor alpha down are you seeing pastor femi is moving forward now now pastor alpha start walking slowly this is progress not restoration restoration means he must be here because this was his original place now let me tell you what this miracle does it picks you and puts you so that if they check your life they cannot see where the delay was so when god says i will restore he didn't say i will release the force so that you make progress no sir there are many of us at your age there are things that should have happened what you need is not progress you need restoration restoration this gift of the spirit is a strange operation of the spirit where people's lives can change overnight overnight god can give speed oh god can bring his word to pass in people's lives he said rejoice not over me my enemies oh the fact that i lost my job and you are seeing me and my wife we are just moving around and i'm not eating anything you are laughing but the day this god arises in 24 hours 24 hours i've seen god do things in my life that has brought tears tears in my eyes i said god so this is what you can do some of you have never been surprised by god there is a way god would do something your first cry is not the miracle is how it happened god i've always heard that you can move like this but this one that you have done it to me no lord i fear you he said he does these things that men will fear him when he does it he signs his signature on your life i am god jabez was a man who was born in sorrow the mother cursed him because of the pain he caused her and jabez said oh that thou wouldest enlarge me god even if you release me to start moving forward now when will i make it let me tell you we need speed in nigeria everything is against a young man's establishment everything if you are a ministry you need this gift in your life otherwise you will be in trouble nobody will give you chair nobody will give you canopy nobody will give you money if you don't know how to command miracles please help that person under the anointing there by the power of God. there are situations tonight that need to hear the word of the lord god is a miracle walker God is a glorious God is God is I know you as a miracle walker in my life Lord God is a glorious just sing it one more time to build faith in your heart my God is, is a miracle walker, miracle walker. God is, you're glorious. God. One more time, say, God is, He's a miracle, a miracle walker. God is. Glorious. There is hope for a tree, even if it be cut. There is hope. There is hope. Apostle, at my age, I've not even gotten admission. My brother, there is hope. This God, in God's economy, one plus one is not two. Oh. One plus one is any answer He gives. Any answer one plus one can be a car what is the relationship between alphabets and car the word of god one plus one can be breakthrough god can carry a man's lifetime achievement 
and give you in one month listen this is not some get rich quick things i don't encourage people to be irresponsible but i'll be a stupid person to tell you i don't believe god can change people's lives overnight look at this ministry look at my life whoever told you god cannot arise for people listen if you don't believe what i'm teaching you you will struggle in your life as if god is not the part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you are we together listen if you are married and three years you've not had a child or four years you have not had a child if you have one child that's a testimony but that's not yet your portion if you have twins you have covered ground that's restoration i hear what i'm saying if you graduated 2000 and let's say six and by 2015 you cannot even rent a house if they give you a job with hundred thousand that's not yet your portion ah that's not your portion come on now how can that be your portion when somebody gets up and say i'm going abroad my house my car and the payment of the school fees i've left the lord say i should give you that's your portion now god is called the god of portions i know this about him righteousness and justice 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 she came to him and said avenge me my enemies the man neither feared god nor men but because she impersonated him listen let me tell you when i begin to pray and make demands over things in my life i don't spare i say god i'm not where i should be oh i'm not where i should be no i'm moving forward thank you but you said i will restore you didn't say i will make progress are we together yes that's how to pray lord as a lady i plan marrying 22 i'm 32 i can't just marry and continue you are going to find a way of carrying me shabakatos lekota sabriata katoshiata hallelujah lord i would have gotten a job in 2010 the man said i should sleep with him and get the job but because of you i refuse now it's 2017 i'm seven years my payroll is seven years where is the window of heaven i place that demand and brothers and sisters you will see god do things that they will think you held a charm God that we serve the working of miracles God is truly a miracle worker I've seen him change people's lives I've seen him step into families this year God has done things in my life that brought tears in my eyes I said God what is this can you allow God use your life to reveal his name the names of God are a revelation of his possibilities. There are names you are just calling, but you have never really seen it. Listen, early this year, I taught on the gifts of men. That thing was not a message. It's a, it's a fearful dimension of God that God brought me into where men stand up to solve your problems as if you charm them there is a grace that makes that happen you will never listen there are some miracles that if they have not happened in your life you will never have time to serve god let's tell ourselves the truth some of you have served god 10 years you are still begging for bread allow god to step in and do something for you you don't need you what you need is more than a job you need god to sign his name in your life how much is a job how much is hundred thousand you now have five children be honest will hundred thousand bless them when one child's monthly school fees is more than a hundred thousand you need the gift of the walking of miracles the wine finished in a feast the gift of miracles is a cure for embarrassment 
cure for embarrassment the wine finished and they went to him he said fill six pots alas master it was borrowed he needed the gift of miracles every time your life is in a point of embarrassment that's the gift you need that's the gift you need that's the gift you need i don't know how to make you believe this thing we are going to pray brothers and sisters before i begin to minister to us please i beg you listen listen i want you to be angry at your current level and say lord this is not what i agreed me and you this in the secret place i am not ungrateful but this is not our agreement by our agreement the level of grace i should be working in now your gift this is not the agreement lift your voice and pray bring forth your strong reasons the gifts of the spirit are the platforms to experience his possibilities hallelujah i have to stop here so that we can pray i'm supposed to teach you how to receive the gift but just leave it we'll take it another time we have to pray this thing i've said i'm angry in my spirit we have to pray there, there are doors that we must force to open now there are doors that we must force to open let me tell you listen listen if you keep following your life casually you will never get some breakthroughs he said right from the days of john the baptist and until now the kingdom of god suffered violence and the violence will take it by force lift your voice and open your mouth announce things that must happen this night lord you gave gifts to men hey your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty Your Majesty, we declare Your Majesty. It's Your Majesty. 
majesty, your 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 majesty, He said, I will walk a walk in your days that if you were told, you will not believe it. I will walk a walk. There is something I want to do in your life. There is something I want to do in your life, in your family. I'd like you to pray one minute. Lord, I believe you all. I believe you. I believe you. Don't let the devil tell you you're wasting your time. Blessed is she that believes. Blessed is she that believes. Visit my finances, O God of heaven. Visit my family. hallelujah hallelujah listen I want us to pray no matter what has left your life call it back call it back lift your voice and pray whether it's money that left your life call it back joy call it back even God who quickened the dead and call it those things call it those things call it those things call it back sakata parato shekete those outside make sure you are praying those following online pray call it back by the spirit of faith by the gift of faith we call back opportunities we call back graces we call back mantles we call back dimensions hallelujah hallelujah I want you to pray just before I pray for us I'm releasing my faith with you I don't know what God told you should have happened and you have not seen it I'd like you to insist now and say God I've not forgotten I bring you to remembrance early this year you told me Lord you told me I will be laughing by October I'm not yet laughing I place a demand I put pressure on your integrity. Lift your voice, lift your voice. 
place a demand. You said it. You can do it. You said it. You will make it happen. It is within your power. Shabakata praskana mato sebre gere gere mo. Ente ke te ke te ke te. Reke te koto shoto preketa. Leke ta paskata bara koto shobre. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. My Bible says withhold not good to him that it is due when it is within your power to give. The Bible said it. Don't withhold good. He said do not say unto him come today, come tomorrow where you can do it now. Say Lord now faith, now faith. I place a demand. Why wait tomorrow when it can happen now? It is within your power. It is within your power. Change my life now. I place a demand. Cry out for your finances. Cry out for your life. Abarato soto kabaradash. Lekata kata kata prasana balana balana bush. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I want you to believe God is giving people things as I'm talking. Listen. You won't cry forever. There is a God that is alive. I want you to believe this. I'm saying it. You won't cry forever. I come with an anointing in this place. I come with the anointing that follows this office. You won't cry forever. There is a God that is alive. 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 hallelujah the lord is showing me a family before the end of august four people getting a job the end of october four one two three four i'm declaring it i'm declaring it it will happen to a family four people within two weeks a supernatural door that embargo of witchcraft is broken now that embargo of witchcraft is broken now I release the grace that makes this happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone we may not have time to call but you were saving up money to buy something. I don't know if it's a car or land. And God gave you an instruction to sow the money. You sowed the money and shared with somebody and the person insulted you and called you stupid. And the Lord is saying, I'm seeing a date in the end, November 21. The Lord is saying between now and that time, as surely as the Lord lives, he's giving you a strange miracle. A strange miracle, November 21. A strange miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what has refused to produce in your life there are some of us you are laboring but the truth is nothing is working there is a spirit of hardship i told you hardship is not poverty 
poverty is part of hardship it's a subset of hardship when that spirit comes even if they make you a director one million will not bless you it's the spirit of hardship you cannot exactly tell what you are doing with the money you just know that every time there is a need you don't have is a spirit what you need is not promotion what you need is the blessing of the lord to take away that thing i'm speaking over someone's life i don't know whose life has been like that but in the name of jesus christ and by the power of the holy spirit i decree and declare that embargo of hardship over your life leaves you now it leaves you now now i'm stretching my hands i'm praying for people this speed i want it to come on your life there is a grace for speed ah look i'm seeing smoke just rising from the altar right down in the name of jesus i stretch my hands and i declare speed speed step into dimensions of accomplishment speed overflow one overflow two overflow three those outside speed the main goal here speed i command it now any area in your life where you have not been moving forward speed in the name of jesus i command speed i command speed i command speed receive it i command speed i don't care the way things have been i'm speaking in speed to your business speed speed is an anointing let it come on you now supernatural speed to your life speed in the name of jesus i release speed i release speed i release speed i release speed hear me the bible says ye have compassed this mountain long enough there are people where you are let me tell you there is there are spirits keeping you there where you are is a mockery to yourself and to your god in the name of jesus this fire that i see in the spirit let it land on whoever must move forward now let it land on whoever must move forward now i prophesy it in the name of jesus the lord god whom i serve and whose i am i command speed i move your life to another dimension to draw from you again again we've come to do Shade God is saying, I should tell you, tell your husband is the season for him to rise. I'm seeing your husband by the end of this month entering a level of strange breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. This is what I'm seeing. Strange breakthrough that God is bringing for him. Strange breakthrough that God is bringing for him. Strange breakthrough. There is a man of God here. I don't know who that person is. But I'm seeing a strange grace for healing. Coming on a man of God. There is someone. I don't know where. But may the spirit of God find that person now. A strange anointing for healing. You will see dimensions of healing miracles happen in your life and ministry. In a way that will surprise you. Strange operations of the spirit. hallelujah the lord is showing me a very strange vision i'm seeing people running i'm seeing a rope i'm seeing them running when they're about to jump a fence the rope pulls them down this is what i'm seeing it will not stop you for provided you are inside the place but to jump the fence the rope stops you where are they oh god i caught that rope i release you break those boundaries what stop your father what stop your mother 
I command that it will not stop you. Shakatatata. Rekete te koto sheketa. Rekete alaba shupasia. Raposo to seketiata. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree, I decree, I decree. An end comes to it tonight. By the operation of the spirit. Limitations are breaking. Limitations are breaking. Sisters, ladies, limitations are breaking. Limitations are breaking. Tribal limitations. Territorial limitations. I command you to break now. Hallelujah. We'll soon round up. Am I wasting your time? I'm seeing a vision and I'm seeing many people with bodies but no heads, no faces. Every time I see this, that means someone's glory has been covered. This is what the Lord, when I see those kinds of, they come in different forms. But because you see, the head of a man, not just the hair, represents the center of glory. When you see a human being walking and no head, there is no structure there is no I, I, I don't know how to pray this prayer now but i need to pray for somebody i don't know what has come you are alive you, you will pass your destiny helper he will act like he's not seeing you there's something covering it is not normal it's not normal it doesn't take so much for men to help you but brothers and sisters when it is covered you can remain here forever buy an instrument and cover it it is still as good as you don't have it because until it is opened i don't know what has stopped you from appearing no job no increase no promotion no joy no peace when people want to help you something happens Some of us here, the suffering you are suffering is, is not supposed to be. What has covered you? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I decree and I declare to you tonight by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I command that embargo many of you will feel like fire on your face literally like fire on your face there is a veil that is being torn i tear that veil right now please help them i tear that veil right now in the name of jesus christ i declare to you arise and shine arise and shine i prophesy it arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine I've taught us here that the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach anything. A herbalist can show you scriptures here that will cause you to walk in witchcraft. Many things happen in the Bible. Demons spoke. Donkeys spoke. People spoke in their backslidden state. Prophets who doubled into divination spoke. It takes the spirit to divide the word accurately and show you which was sponsored. The part of scripture that was sponsored by the spirit is what we call the word of God. Are you getting blessed? There are diversities of gifts. Diversities of gifts. In this end time, we are going to see moves of the spirit in proportions and dimensions that will bring harsh criticism but will birth the glory of God in unusual ways. Point number two. Please, let's hurry up. Number five. Media, help us. There are differences in ministries. Now, do you know what he's saying? That means under the same gift, the way you dispense it like a pharmacist giving drugs is different. The same gift but the dispensing of that gift, the administration of it is different. That means you can see three prophets. 
are we together but the character and the nature of that operation is different verse 6 then he says there are diversities of activities but it's the same God who works all and in all so let's get to the gifts seven but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all now here is the key the gift of the spirit is for the profit of the body the profit of the body the profit of the body not the profit of a denomination not the profit of a man of God not a profit of just an individual it is for the profit of all verse 8 for to one is given the word of wisdom so Paul is classifying them now are we together now through the spirit to another is given the word of knowledge through the same spirit please let's run it down next verse to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing take note do you see an s there with gifts not a gift of healing gifts of healing by the same spirit next verse to another oh dear media is playing a lot of games with our our passion let me open it so that I can read it. There's no time for this. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, various or diverse kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. 11 and we stop there. It says, but all this worketh that one and the same very same spirit dividing unto every man severally as he wills now close your bible and let's talk so paul for the sake of order remember the entire text of first of first corinthians 12 13 14 the entire subject can be summarized in one word 1 Corinthians 14 verse 40. It says, let all things be done decently and in order. So Paul, he, his, his, his passion is to see that everything is done decently. But in order to do that, he had to build like a wise master builder and teach them. The gifts of the spirit are not limited to nine. Yes, it is true that there are nine gifts theologically defined according to the experience of the present day church theologically speaking the nine gifts let's work with the nine gifts for the sake of understanding um, many of us know that they are divided into three categories the first category is called the revelatory gifts the gifts that have to do with revelation and insight from the realm of the spirit revelatory gifts and there are three of the revelatory gifts the word of wisdom the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits i'm not going to dwell on all of them i'll just touch them there are a few i want us to just stop there revelatory gifts that's the first classification theologically speaking that the gifts of the spirit are classified into three first revelatory gifts the word of wisdom the word of knowledge the discerning of spirits number two utterance or vocal gifts that's the second classification gifts that have to do with speech communication all the gifts will require communication but that this one's the primary medium for dispensing them is your mouth speech the gift of diverse kinds of tongues the gift of interpretation of tongues and the gift of prophecy comes under this classification the gift of diverse kinds of tongues don't just write tongues diverse kinds of tongues the gifts of interpretation of tongues and the gift of prophecy and then number three power gifts the third classification theologically speaking power gifts and that includes the gift of faith the gifts of healing add s to gifts the gifts of healing and then the working of miracles so three 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 the revelatory gifts that make you think like christ the utterance gifts that make you speak like christ 
the power gifts that make you act like Christ the revelatory gifts make you think like Christ the vocal gifts make you speak like Christ the power gifts cause you to act like Christ are we together let's take them one by one very quickly number one word of wisdom what is it what exactly is the word of wisdom <laughs> the word of wisdom is the ability to supernaturally profess solutions to situations and problems the supernatural ability to profess solutions to situations problems challenges that are beyond your current level of education sorry i'm fast i'm running supernatural ability to profess solutions to problems and situations beyond your current level of education exposure physical maturity and experience when you sustain an ability in the spirit to communicate divine ideas and solutions to human problems problems that defy your current level of exposure problems that defy the the the, the knowledge that your level of maturity should have brought your level of education and your level of experience is called the word of stone access to supernatural illumination access to supernatural understanding you need it now let me tell you this many people have downplayed on this gift of the spirit you know why because in our thinking we think it is not charismatic do you know do you know truly let me tell you this is one of the apex of the apostolic ministry not even power gifts not revelatory gifts it's impossible to claim you're working in the apostolic office truly and lack the gift of wisdom because the apostolic office is first an administrative office Jesus himself manifested this John chapter 8 when you read 1 to 11 it was the 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 issue of the woman who was caught in adultery John chapter 8 1 to 11 we're not going to we're not going to read all that because of time but just write it John chapter 8 1 to 11 Jesus was teaching and he sat down somewhere and then the Pharisees and scribes caught a woman in adultery you know every time I read this story I'm surprised where was the man you see that victimizing women did not start today no the man may be part of them the goal was to pin Jesus you, you see it now let me tell you where you need this gift because this our world is full of wicked men and women who will look for every and anything to throw you destroy your business destroy your ministry destroy you down you need the gift of the word of wisdom and then they came to Jesus sorry there's no time let me just quote it threw that woman in front of him and they said Jesus you claim you're a prophet you claim you are by here is a test we caught this woman in adultery in the very act of it very act means that there should be a man he said man you can go the woman let's just go <laughs> you see how wicked those people were then when they threw him they now said Moses said I hope you know that part of the condition to be a true prophet is that you must acknowledge every other prophet that has come so if Jesus now rejected Moses they'll say you see you're a fake prophet and if Jesus said, yes, you are right, they'll say, now you have submitted to our religious governing authorities. That was a difficult situation. You will be faced with situations in your life where yes and no will still put you in trouble. Both yes and no will land you in trouble. Your enemies is like penalty. You know how they, they, they pay football and they pin you, you are the goalkeeper, they're about to pay. The, the people are already shaking themselves. It's at that point we need to tap into this dimension of the gift of the spirit. People vow that because of tribalism they will drive you out of your job. The boss says something, your superior 
and direct boss and the manager says something conflicting statements they carry the file and drop and two of them are calling you let me tell you you don't need education you need the gift of the word of wisdom you obey the one directly under you they sack two of you you obey the one above you you come back and meet the one in your unit it helps us to think like Christ he says let this mind permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus business people need this mind every leader needs this understanding and here's what Jesus did they thought Jesus was going to say certain things Jesus kept writing writing the Holy Ghost was moving him the fountain of wisdom itself then he lifted up his head in confidence and here's what he said he who does not have sin he was talking about it's another way of saying I'm the only one who is qualified to cast the stone you get it and then he said he just like Joseph said find a man who is discreet and wise it was another way of saying I'm here he who does not have sin to cast the stone and I'm sure he was the oldest guy who was the other party there and he lifted the stone and he dropped it everyone dropped it and he said woman where are thine accusers and she turned he said neither do I accuse you go and sin no more Jesus manifested that was not word of knowledge that was the gift of the word of wisdom how many times we have been weak by life because we lack this an opportunity that would have honored you how many pastors who stood before government officials would have made certain statements by the spirit that would have given them access to certain things imagine how many foolish decisions our loved ones have taken born again and filled with the holy spirit but not allowing these possibilities find expression you need the gift of the word of wisdom in your life education is limited your experiences are limited you cannot wait to respond to life only based on your exposure and experience you will need that grace can we pray in one minute and cry to the God of heaven and say Lord I'm tired of foolish decisions I access wisdom by the Spirit the word of wisdom my life is full of challenges that need to be surmounted and Lord I need a dimension of wisdom that is beyond my age there are many of us in ministry you you have challenges financially administratively in terms of growth and membership there are many of us here you need grace you don't know what to do should I get a job should I do business you, you need the word of wisdom you need the word of wisdom a supply of intelligence that is above this realm you need God to communicate something that bails you out lift your voice and pray in one minute help me oh God spirit of the living God I open up to you my destiny is at the mercy of your wisdom speak to me tired of piercing myself again and again with needless sorrows when your wisdom can bail me out of the vicissitudes of life hallelujah are we blessed please sit down we have to run just help those under the anointing in 2004 i spent three weeks praying this gift into my life three weeks god is my witness praying it into my life i said lord you cannot send me as foolish as i am and i am too young to make the decisions I should make. I need a supply of intelligence that is higher. Listen, some mistakes in life don't have second chance. Some answers, the Bible says to not be hasty. You can stand before your destiny helper and blow up your opportunity forever. That's why Jesus kept quiet. Because this is not a usual communication. You need the spirit to speak. How many people have stood before their supervisors? How many people have stood before their financial helpers? How many people have stood before their boss? He says, I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that your enemies will not be able to gainsay or resist. Number two, 
the word of knowledge what is it the word of knowledge is a supernatural insight and access into past and present events with a view to proffering solutions with a view to proffering solutions access into happenings access into occurrences sometimes even occurrences that predate your own birth our world is full of wickedness and we need this dimension of the holy spirit that can help us to go back in time and piece together useful informations that help us to interpret the happenings in our lives are we together now oftentimes the secret to the future is in the past when we can sustain the eyes to go back and see and understand word of knowledge the purpose of the gift of the word of knowledge primarily aside from supplying informations is to build the faith and the conviction of the recipients if i can reach into an information in your life and supply you an information that might be useful in helping you interpret your today it can build your faith now notice that the, of the word of knowledge and prophecy works peri pursu. in fact many people mistaking this gift half of what people call prophecy is the manifestation of the word of knowledge the word of knowledge only deals with past events and present events when it becomes futuristic that's prophecy past events present events two examples very quickly in john chapter 1 you read from verse 45 to the last verse 51 john chapter 1 the bible tells us about a man called nathaniel are we together nathaniel was beckoned by philip that jesus they had met the messiah that was prophesied and nathaniel made a very sarcastic statement nathaniel said can anything good come out of nazareth while all that conversation was happening jesus was somewhere watching them then Nathanael comes and Jesus sees Nathanael. Here's what Jesus said. An Israelite indeed in whom there is guile. And Nathanael saw him and said, uh-uh, you mean you know me? And he said, Nathanael, while you were under the tree insulting me, I saw you. <gasps> Nathanael was amazed. Immediately, an attestation, this is the Christ, truly, the son of the living God. And then he said, Nathanael, just because I gave you this, you were stunned. You are going to see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending remember when jesus was with the samaritan woman at the well that woman had the potential to bring a lot of people to hear and listen to jesus preparing them for what would happen at redemption but there needed to be an access point the woman had to be convicted and then jesus came to her and they started a conversation about water and then jesus looks at her and says to her madam you have five husbands past the sixth one that you are with now is not your husband and she looked she said i perceive you're a prophet and then he began to talk to her the bible says she left her water pot there ran to the city and said all of you come come and see a man he didn't say come and see a preacher come and see a man that manifested a gift that astonished me come come see a man that has told me what i've done and when the people came and listened to jesus here was their testimony we now believe not because of what you have said we have had that encounter by ourselves the word of knowledge if used in accordance to the word is powerful i have watched people's faith jump leap just because a communication one word was given to them by the spirit do you know let me tell you this never fight the gifts of the spirit it may be abused that's why we are balancing it but do not ever fight it the encouragement that happens to your faith when a true man of God gives you a genuine word of knowledge not a general guesswork that you know this is not edifying there are words of knowledge that are not blessing are we together if I look at you and say you have pain all over your body 
the probability is yes something must be paining you somewhere so that's not powerful enough to convict you but when i look at you and say pastor alpha while you were eating yam from home before coming and this and that and that and that and i talk to you ah something happens to your faith and all of a sudden you look and you are like my the God who can see me is the one who is telling me now by this time tomorrow you will be foolish to doubt him are we together now the word of knowledge listen listen let me have your attention the word of knowledge is a powerful instrument of building faith have you gone to a place where you see people being sarcastic and nasty and lousy and insulting the cynical people and then one really strong accurate powerful well delivered word of knowledge and all of a sudden you see everybody wipes sleep and you say lift up your hand and everybody is lifting and open the unbelief in our world require the gifts of the spirit to tame doubt and release the power of God to people I remember betting with a woman the gender of her child and I told her she argued it was a female. I said, if it's a male, you will make pepper soup for me. If it's a female, I don't know how to make pepper soup, so I will give you the financial equipment. I started dancing. I said, hey, somebody is going to make pepper soup for me. <laughs> what a free way of earning a living. <laughs> Imagine what happens to your stubborn loved ones. You know, we have almost every family has for whatever reason we have people around us who the devil is trying to snatch you pray in tongues they shout they talk nonsense i want to go to the house of god no 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 and then one day god just lands in a way and you commute not not for self-aggrandizement you speak a powerful word to your father and say sir the lord told me to tell you while you were at the bank trying to collect that money it was Remember that your argument with that woman, her name was Stella. Usually they will act as if you are lying. And then later they will call you and say, who told you? Let me tell you, the human spirit can never resist the supernatural. Our pride can claim it doesn't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If you, if you encounter the word of knowledge, whether you repent or not, you can't sleep that night for sure. Ah, ah. He called my name and said this and said that i think where it was in joss if you can remember when joss ministering um some i think one of the polytechnics and then while i was ministering the holy ghost ministered to me that there was a young man who was doubting you know you know these are people where you know doubting doubting how are we sure remember this story and i said there is a young man now this is what you are thinking to yourself you are doubting and this is what is wrong with you god will heal you now when that guy came out even me when you see him you know it had to be god that brought him out guy just came out dragging and said honestly he was standing there doubting this thing i was like magic brothers and sisters our shout is too much let the gifts help us our 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 begging is too much let the god brought these gifts to make the gospel superior the the way we communicate this thing we are the mercy of people's wills we beg we beg you know everybody oh yeah lift your hand now is jesus not here my jesus and everybody's looking at you where is he and you are negotiating with them no the bible says that when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power if you are a prophet if someone gives you a word of knowledge it will impress you you won't say because i'm walking it it's like you are it's like you are a nurse when you are sick won't you turn for injection will you say because i'm a nurse? no another nurse will give you an injection and you will receive it so that you'll be well listen i want you to cry tonight and say lord my family needs salvation let this gift of the spirit walk in my life pray one minute there are doubters in my community 
insulting and blaspheming the name of the Lord oh that you would grant me access oh God the word of knowledge supernatural illumination insight into events explaining the mysteries of the lives of men helping men make sense of their lives hallelujah please sit down number three discerning of spirits I can spend the whole night here but let's see how God will help us what's discernment or we call it discernment or discerning of spirits please do not joke with this gift this gift of the spirit will be um, it will bail you out of many pains are we together what is discerning of spirits the gift of perception perception the ability to perceive spiritual impulses the ability to know the origin the source and the motivation behind the manifestation the origin the source and even the motif behind the manifestation is called discernment whether activity is initiated and sustained by God whether it is an act of man's will or it is demonic you will never judge them by the physical results it will take discernment for you to know that which is of God brothers and sisters let me tell you and I submit to you with all humility it will be foolish to imagine everything happening in the body of Christ is of God no there are things that are orchestrated by demons there are doctrines that came from devils the Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons there is such a doctrine as the doctrine of demons not the study of demons an understanding that was fabricated intentionally from the pit of hell to destroy the saints are we together you need discernment it is only through discernment that you can judge righteous judgment it's impossible for you to judge accurately if you lack discernment you will call good evil you will call evil good you will call saints devils you will call devils saints it takes discernment the realm of the spirit is not heaven the realm of the spirit is a spiritual environment the environment that birthed this realm the raw materials that have now crystallized as matter in this realm came from the realm of the spirit and anyone who has access to the realm of the spirit has a superior advantage whether through divination whether through the holy spirit or any spirit any spirit that can access the realm of the spirit has an advantage over this realm that's why jesus said i am the door there are many other entrances but he says i'm the authorized entrance meaning you can enter the house through a window you can enter the house through somewhere if i enter your house if you step into your house and you find me and i crawled my way through a gutter somewhere am i inside your house yes did i enter legally no the authorized way is the gate and the door i've told you every power you see being manifested on earth is god's power every plus the power manifested by witchcraft once have i spoken twice have we heard that all the only reason why it is called witchcraft is because there is an agenda behind that result and the whole spirit is not the spirit that authorized that possibility to find expression so there is the correctness of the result does not mean it is of god 
the correctness of the result is gauged by the spirit that sponsored it any activity in the realm of the spirit sponsored by the holy spirit has god's endorsement that means that it is possible this guy can be sick and as a harvest i can conjure leaves based on a book my grandfather taught me correct and he says when you put lemon and add it with guava drink pour charcoal on it set it on fire in the night it can raise a kind of incense that will bring health to him and my grandfather will say that's how we live healthy this guy can be sick i will conjure those things it will shock you right in your presence the way the guy will be healed you say i can't feel pain again he said that's it and he'll go and bring someone else now if i come as a man of god and i say wow we are brothers we are not brothers we are not brothers we are not brothers are we together no we are not brothers brothers are those from the same father and mother or at least father correct we can't be brothers you see because the spirit one time i was ministering to a lady and they took her somewhere in zaria here and she she described a very nasty experience that she had she said when she went there one of the things that happened to her was that they will burn you will drop your money not honorarium there's an exact amount that you drop once you drop the man you know the whatever it is will now call certain names cajole you know read from book slates and all kinds of things and the moment they say it a spirit will tell that man um whatever spirit influence and then all of a sudden you know how it happens when people manifest the the victim now will start shaking shaking and before you know it the spirit will start speaking now here's the interesting point after all the conversation with the spirit you now ask moya why did you come maybe they annoyed me or i didn't eat you know how spirits talk they are so dull i have no i've not eaten and you people are eating in this land and we are here hungry and then instead of casting out the devils because they cannot cast out the devils they do what we call occultic pacifism you pacify by an atonement you see that so you is the spirit that will tell you what it will eat so the spirit will say one black goat you say top that's it you to all of you had it's not me that wants to eat the goat and then they bring the goat and the only thing the man burns is the legs and the head <laughs> who will not burn that part and settle down with the real part of the goat and said look he that serves in the altar should, should eat from the altar And then when I looked at the lady in my mind, I said, what is, what is all this thing now? And you know, before I would talk, all of a sudden, that spirit just started manifesting. And I said, honestly, I don't have all this time. Please, I'm tired. Just live in the name of Jesus Christ. And that was the end of it. When the lady got up, her mother was surprised. And watched this. Because that, this thing, you will go for many days. It's not like you will go once. If you don't complete the uh, the the program the demon gave it can backfire and kill everybody you know how it happens and all of that let me tell you all that is nonsense i repeat nonsense absolute nonsense now, there is a name oh, that was given to believers there is a name there is a name it says in my name it didn't say the mentioning of it you can shout Jesus till forever. And like the sons of Sceva, demons will pound on you like many people talk. It's not about pronunciation. There is a guy, there's one guy that committed a crime recently. His name is Jesus. I'm mean, one, one of these funny guys. Now, not, not the footballer I was reading. I said, Jesus, can you imagine that guy? So you stand and shout. And while you are shouting, Jesus, Jesus, no. It is not in the pronunciation it's in the revelation the miracle is in your understanding that's why jesus looked at them and said go one of the standard proofs of spiritual maturity is discernment you cannot say you are matured in the spirit if this gift is not working in your life brothers and sisters i submit to you and I join the many loving men of God around the world and together we take responsibility for not helping the body of Christ mature. We have produced miracles. We have produced signs and wonders. But the average believer is not matured at all. 
we do not understand the speakings of the spirit we do not know how to interpret spiritual things we are dull of hearing no ears that hear no eyes that see but God is helping us in Jesus name there are many other texts that talk about discernment the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 let me give it to you please just write very quickly Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 the Bible says that strong meat is for those who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses to discern between good and evil in Acts chapter 16 from verse 16 to 18 when you read Acts 16 from verse 16 to 18 Paul came into a city and there was a young lady the Bible called her a damsel he said that this lady had the spirit of divination and some business people saw her and saw the potentials in her and they negotiated she would give word of knowledge and prophecy and she would bring money and the Bible said they made much gain with it and then one time she saw Paul preaching and here's what she said that's why you need discernment these are the holy men of God they have come to show us the way of righteousness let me tell you what many of us would do say wow you mean how long have you been in ministry I never knew that I mean you are so generous you don't know me you're already talking about me so let's walk together can we walk come to my pulpit on Sunday even if it's a Saturday night listen please hallow your altar don't bring anybody just because you saw gifts let there be a system of vetting for the sake of the sheep are we together these are the men the first day Paul kept quiet second the Bible says she kept doing it one time Paul looked and said wow prophesying word of knowledge and Paul just switched in the realm of the spirit and saw a demon manipulating and said look hurry up let's we must make gate to them Paul casted that demon you know they beat Paul because of it the rest is history the people were angry because they knew that business was closed for them as soon as the lady was delivered she got up madam are you seeing nothing I'm not seeing anything again Lord give us discernment first Kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 first Kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 we don't have the time but let me give you that story I wanted to use it as the text the classic text to explain discernment for you the Bible says that God gave Solomon an understanding heart and his first test was two harlots who came before him praise God the Bible says that those, all of them had, you know, they had a child each. And then the Bible says, whilst they were sleeping, one slept on her child. I don't know what kind of sleep that was. And suffocated the child to death. Then she got up in the middle of the night, shook her child and found out her child was dead. And quietly replaced the child. The next day when they got up, there was, there was an issue. The woman wanted to breastfeed her child and noticed that the child was dead but she looked well and said no this is not my child off they went to Solomon and when they got there the woman who swapped the child started you know they started advocating and said this and that and that and Solomon looked that was a serious situation now notice this is what I want to teach you notice how Solomon manifested discernment the first thing he did was he said bring the sword that's the word of God go and get me the sword this confusion requires the word of God that is able to cut asunder and divide between bone and marrow. That knife was a similitude of the sword of the spirit. Discernment is impossible if you do not understand the character of God. Not just the word of God. You must know what God can do and what he cannot do. The operation of any spirit must be consistent with the general operation of God such that even if you do not find a scripture for it it still must be consistent verbatim and so when they brought the sword he said bring the child bring the issue of contention this is how we are going to discern we are going to use the word of God to divide that issue and immediately he lifted the sword the sword was not for the child it was for their hearts the woman the woman whose child was 
Like the Bible says, can a mother forget her suckling child? I said, no, no, please. If it's issue of death now, hand it over. And the other woman was saying, you see, I'm right. And Solomon said, I've gotten my answer. Madam, give this woman her child. Go and bury your own child. Discernment. Let me tell you something. In this our world, somebody can steal a laptop and sell that laptop and wear a suit and swear and say, me? Do I look like somebody who can steal a laptop? You need discernment. You can see somebody that looks like a thief truly. Looks like a thief, scattered, disorganized. But he may be one of the most honest persons in your life. Is that true? Policemen need this. Our, our, because the number of people in prison today that are not supposed to be there, it's only God that will help. You can look at me now. Never believe that I will steal a laptop. What for? But what if I have a spirit that makes me steal it? Are we together now? We have blamed innocent people. They carry money in your house and you come. No discernment. You call everybody. And a smart young chap who is the thief about to go for lectures. And one guy just comes out. He's, he may not be born again, but he doesn't steal. And you look at him and say, come. Are you going to just bring this money out now? Or they will arrest you. And he say, I'm not the one. You need discernment. If you do not have discernment, you are going to destroy your leadership because the world is full of deception. Are we together? Someone can be killing you and look at you and smile while you are dying, while they are piercing you. That's the person who said, don't promote this person. This person is not from this state. And you come and meet him and say, sir, my portion is stretching. He said, my son, ha, or you sit down. What did you discuss with them? And they went and say this fool. But with discernment, as soon as you sit down, something in your spirit, you may not see a vision, but something refuses to agree. Something just says, uh uh. So, have you ever wanted to do something? Maybe you wanted to do business with somebody, or you wanted to do a discussion, or you were just saying, We are going to be partners, and you could not sleep in the night. Not fear, I'm not talking of fear. For, and everything, physically speaking, was correct. Have you ever made up your mind that you are going to ask a lady out? You prayed, you fasted, you were happy. On that day, after you talking and put your tie, your spirit, your, your peace ceased. Ah. You said, I mean, I've, I look forward to this time. Let me tell you why many people land into trouble. We numb those things and continue. And continue. You were about to travel, but the thing in your spirit, not fear. And you ignored it. Discernment is powerful. Discernment is powerful. But let me tell you something. No matter, most people train their discernment just by prayer. They never study the word. That's why they get into confusion. Are we together? If all you do is pray and pray and pray and pray, your eyes will be open to the realm of the spirit, but your capacity to interpret the impulses will be wrong. That's why you will give false visions. You will give false interpretations. You will see a nice lady. Come, darling. You will see a nice lady like this lady now. And you just sense something demonic in her. And because you do not have the word to understand, you just look and say, Kai, I stood near this lady and I had some, this lady must be a witch. No, sir, she's not a witch. You are not a good Bible student. You are a prayer warrior, but you do not understand the word. And you are using error to now change this lady and call her a witch. Are we together now? Let's be very careful. We have, we have destroyed people's lives. Pastors have used inaccurate discernment alongside other gifts to scatter marriages. Hello? We have called everybody witch. You just turn and you look at a lady like this. You say, why are you looking fine like this? You are a witch. No, you are not a witch. Pray for two of them and see who, who gets delivered. We must be careful. Discernment is needed in our day today. Do you know prophets cried in the Bible when things happened and they did not see it or, or perceive it. They said, Lord, why did you hide this from me? May God build us to a point where nothing passes above you without your spirit receiving the seed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
or some of us have those impulses but we do not know how to interpret it and respond to it you've been having an impulse like death is around the corner but you didn't know what to do until somebody died and say yeah so this is what i've been feeling those impulses are not caused by demons it is the holy spirit listen to my message spiritual perception the holy spirit is attempting to communicate to you if you do not have the word of god your dreams will be corrupted hello because dreams and visions are also an extension of discernment am i blessing you one of the most deceptive tools that satan is using now i think in the last four five years has been aberrated dreams and visions God would make your destiny, the devil would try to use the face of your destiny helper to chase you in a dream. You stand up and bind him for two hours, reject him in the physical, and remain poor and broke forever. We have to be careful. Satan has made families fight today by using the faces of mothers and fathers, and you just say, I saw my mother with a knife. I say, I don't care, she will die. Be careful. Be careful. Listen, our only basis for escaping error is the word of God please you have to believe what I'm saying the study of scripture is important it gives us an insight into how God works so we can judge from that lens there are many dreams when you get up you are just supposed to say nonsense blast in tongues for 10 minutes 20 minutes 1 hour and that ends it but some of us document everything plus wicked dreams from the pit of hell we document it and then when you are mentoring somebody one day you say these are my of dreams read it and then the guy reads it and says, wow strange creatures i said it's the realm of the spirit just keep reading you see let me tell you don't laugh i'm saying this because there are people now who are not even sure of anything again is that true satan can manipulate dreams one brother can have a dream and see 10 sisters he saw one when he was praying about her he saw another you, you see confusion i'm not saying he's a bad brother but now you've seen 10 ladies you are now confused so even if somebody comes to prophesy and say it's is um sister seven that you saw number seven you say what of two that i first saw one before seven and confusion what of people who marry and have dreams and see someone who is not their husband and get up and say that means i made a mistake i knew it i knew that this look you are married you are married there is grace to live there is grace to work it out it is this lack of thing that can make a man who has been with a woman for 20 years she gave you children all of a sudden you made money and then you go and meet and, and it's usually us prophets and apostles you come and meet us and then we just conjure all kinds of stories the man goes back home and drives the wife Say discernment. Say it again, discernment. You need discernment. You need discernment to know who to help. Someone comes to lie down in your room all through that night. Strange occurrences happen. It's, it's not a devil, but he needs help. Are we together? People bring atmospheres. Discernment helps you to pick the impulses of people. Sometimes as I minister to people, that's how I know they are, they are in trouble. They may come out for something else, but as I stand, there are all kinds of things happening and I know that something is wrong. Something is wrong. When you train yourself, you can discern the presence of angels. You will not see them, but you can describe them. It's a mystery. You will know, not just that they are angels, but what kind of angels and their operation. You can know their direction. Are you see if now you see let me tell you if your spirit is not trained to understand this you will always think that the people who are saying it are lying and there are people who are lying are we together but you can discern it you can know you can train yourself in a room by the time you are worshiping and the shekinah of god comes not just by your shaking you know i'm not alone this is zion now this room has changed you, that's how you discern anointings as a man of God and you don't use anointing like a general purpose machine gun you won't be effective in ministry like that because you will be ministering an area you sense the anointing but you could not discern what kind of anointing and to what degree so we can be ministering here now 
and all of a sudden the healing anointing now begins to come if you do not have that discernment you can be saying something else and you see the anointing just like the Holy Spirit is very sensitive when the anointing comes into a place and it's not acknowledged and channeled by faith for operation it will be unfruitful as powerful as it is nothing works without faith even the anointing everyone say discernment think of how many things that have happened in our lives because we lack discernment we need to cry for discernment we need to cry for discernment can we pray in one minute say lord discernment grant discernment to discern good and evil to discern opportunities to discern helpers to discern enemies to discern doors to discern manipulations of demons over my life hallelujah hallelujah you need discernment I think he was in Koinonia here one time after a very hot miracle service. The very next day, some guys called a lady. They called the lady and said she won. Uh, I, 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 don't, I can't remember the amount, but a very huge amount, you know. Let's assume maybe one million or five million. And told her you won it. Make sure you don't tell anybody. Quietly find your way to the front of, I, I think it was um, maybe First Bank or somewhere like that and they met that lady there the rest is history the next thing that lady found herself in kaduna in a building one of our ladies she's no longer here found herself in kaduna they took her somewhere in your kaduna one place that looks like a warehouse it was as if her eyes i don't know how to you you get what i'm saying as if you are you are you are awake but it's as if they did something to your eyes and all of a sudden her it's like her eyes she came back to herself and she called me i said where are you and she said i'm so 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 please i said hey, can you walk out and see a bike there i said take a bike immediately straight i told her take a bike straight to cow no matter how much just arrive there first i was waiting for that lady until she arrived in and i said what happened to you she said honestly she doesn't know I remember one thief that Pastor Jakes caught in. The, I think Pastor Jakes was going to Sabo or something. And then the guy was, you know, some of them use charm. Abracatabra. They sit down and they do something. They, they don't put their hand there. They can just hang it around and your money follows them. From today, that devil that comes near you, the, the fire and the discernment, you will, you will know and you will hold the hand and tell him, look, not everybody is a normal human being. There are people who are men plus possibilities. Men plus possibilities. Hallelujah. Can we touch on one more gift? Let's touch on diverse kinds of tongues. Hmm. How many have I done? One, two, three. Let's do four. We can continue next week because there's something i want to talk about that is hot in my spirit i was preparing it while i was let's just talk about tongues the bible tells us that there are diverse kinds of tongues everybody say diverse kinds of tongues when the bible says diverse that means that there are different kinds of tongues probably i think one of the greatest conflicts between and thank god for great men of god like Reverend Tende, who wrote a book, I think it was a book particularly tailor made to the northern church to help most every Christian pray in tongues. Wonderful text, you can get it and read it. It was an attempt to give a, a very solid 21st century biblical foundation because probably one of the greatest points of conflict between the Pentecostal, charismatic, and the Orthodox is this dividing line of this subject of tongues is that true many of us come from backgrounds and families where people have different kinds of responses some of us even as we are now probably we are still 
there's an internal war over the issue of tongues the bible talks of diverse kinds of tongues and in first corinthians 13 paul gives us a little he opened it more to us he says though i speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels tongues of men refer to any earthly language the language understood by men used by inhabitants upon the earth the tongues of angels refer to supernatural communications not just languages used by angels angelios messengers any being that hails from the realm of the spirit communicating a language that is not known to men is called the tongues of angel it was an ancient way of communicating spiritual things the bible and theologically speaking identifies broadly speaking three kinds of tongues number one is what we call tongues for personal edification and growth you may want to write it down maybe you will help somebody with it tongues for personal edification and growth first corinthians 14 and verse 2 the bible speaks there he says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to God not unto men but to God so there is tongues that is for personal edification and growth there's tongues that the Bible says that is a sign to unbelievers are we together as was the case in Acts chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 to 12 the day of Pentecost the Bible says that the people were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues. And among the many variations of tongues, they were communicating earthly languages. Are we together? And most of the people came and heard them. Let's go to verse 6. Just give us verse 6 and let's, let's look at what. It says, and when the sound of God, the multitudes came together and they were confused. Because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Can you imagine? Almost every language there was represented. Someone was communicating it. Now, the communicators did not even know what language they were speaking. But the listeners, they were not just speaking a language in the spirit and interpreting it. They were communicating a language they never learned. Hallelujah. A sign to unbelievers. History is full of people who have done that. It happened to Kenneth E. Hagin. It happened to R.W. Shambach of Blessed Memories. People who would go to certain lands to preach and there would be no interpreter. And the power of God would fall on them. And they would preach in Chinese fluently for that period of time. Afterwards, everything goes down. So there is tongues as a sign to unbelievers. Then number three, there is tongues as a ministry gift. Tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body first corinthians chapter 14 when you read from verse 4 and 5 5 particularly the bible talks to us about that tongues very important it says i wish you all spoke with tongues but even more that you should prophesy he says, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues. Unless, that means this is the condition for them to become equal. We are coming there. That the one who prophesies is greater than the one who manifests these kinds of tongues. Unless, that means the moment there is an interpreter, what he's speaking and the interpretation will equal prophecy. Are we together now? Yes. Now let me show you where the confusion is before we talk about diverse kinds of tongues. Give us verse 29 and 30. This is where many people have erroneously carved out a basis for confusion. 12, 29, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 12, 29 and 30. Are all apostles? What's the answer? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Watch this now. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Here's where many of our dear, wonderful men and women of God who are well-meaning, love the Lord, but have inaccurate understanding of the word of God. This is where the confusion has come. It says, do all speak with tongues? Now look at what context of tongues. 
the next verse to all interpret so he's talking about tongues as a ministry gift not tongues as for your personal edification are we together now not everybody will manifest the gift of diverse kinds of tongues what is it really the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is a supernatural communication listen prophecy in an unknown, unknown, an unknown language be it heavenly or earthly prophecy in an unknown language you are communicating a word from the Lord to the people of God but it is in a language that is not known by you the speaker and most most often than not by the listeners when you communicate a word from the Lord that is supposed to edify the people are we together now but it's just that it came in a language that is not known by you the speaker nor the listeners there must be the spirit of God must move upon you the speaker or another person to break down that spiritual message you brought so that the listeners can hear and apply their faith to it and receive so when I begin to say everybody pray in tongues there are a number of people who have problem with it and say no it's not in the Bible it, it was there in the day of Pentecost the church in Corinth were manifesting it in fact let me tell you this Paul himself made a very profound statement and he said I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye all when you read 1st Corinthians 14 verse 18 and then you read verse 39 1st Corinthians 14 verse 18 and then verse 39 he says I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all Paul is saying look 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 I pray in tongues more than ye all not just that I, I interpret all of this see that it is important please listen to me if you are here seated maybe you are just coming today inside or outside and you have shortchanged yourself because you have probably been sincerely but wrongly indoctrinated that praying in tongues is a gift that is for a few people the person who communicated that is not in error he was only incomplete is that true what kind of tongues if he means the gift of diverse kinds of tongues he's correct it's not for everybody the bible says that and where that gift is manifested it is only beneficial to the body if there is an interpreter the individual who communicated it or another person but the bible says the tongues for edification does not need interpretation because not speaking to men we are speaking to god 14 verse 2 see that are we together now have you gotten that clearly so this is very very important you are here and you are not filled with the holy spirit i can begin to give you a rundown of several things you are missing when the ministry was a lot smaller i used to do that by myself then pastor jakes came joined a jimmy too used to join and now the ministry is, is so large we've handed everything to the prayer department and boy are they doing a great job if you are here you are not filled with the holy spirit with evidence of praying in tongues I want you to know that Tuesday is a wonderful opportunity for you. Come, whether or not it's their, their baptism, you know, a prayer, you just come and make sure that they can minister to you. Hallelujah. Let me stop here and talk on words. We will take from interpretation of tongues and, and the rest because next week, please don't mix next week, it will be a very great impartation. The Lord instructed me to activate these gifts. But I want to talk on words. The Holy Spirit, while I was getting ready to go and take my bath, I was just, you know, praying a little. And then the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. The anointing of the Spirit just came strong upon me. And the Lord told me that I should speak to people about words. Write this down. Words are God's instrument of creation words next week when i teach you the I, we finish the vocal gifts and the power gifts we'll talk some more but it's important for you to know words are god's instrument of creation and one classic proof of spiritual growth and maturity is the ability to speak consistent with the word of god listen carefully the ability for your communications and your speakings to always without fail be in line with the word of God now sometimes 
in an attempt to press into deeper dimensions of God. Listen carefully and I must admit this to you. You know sometimes as we press towards superior dimensions in the spirit which is valuable, we tend to trivialize some of these foundational truths and look at them as though they are basic, they are for children. At every level of your work with God, your words will be the programmers of your destiny. Write it down. Your words are the programmers of your destiny. You don't talk anyhow, speak antichrist. You must culture your words by the word of God. You must ensure that your communication is building your life and your destiny. Many of us have destroyed our lives because we have allowed our words. Let me show you a few scriptures that will really challenge you. Can I give you some verses about words that have really, really blessed me? I tried to write the five or six most powerful scriptures I have found about words and I will give it to you. Ready? Media, please help us. If we can project them, they will be great. Um, we we'll need some speed here so that we can pray number one john 6 63 john 6 63 the words that i speak unto you jesus is speaking he says it is the spirit that quickeneth listen the flesh profited nothing the words that i speak unto you they are not just sounds that enter your ears they are spirit and life so while you are saying it is not for people like us we are the nobodies. You are sending spirits. You are sending instruments of creation. You are sending messengers into your future. Programming war. Programming tragedies for you. Words are powerful. God created the universe through words. The only thing God did not create through words is man. And he said it. It's just that he added with his hand again. Every other thing God said, God saw. God said, God saw. Number two, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. And then we'll go to Matthew 12, 37. Let me give us a verse ahead. Media, please give us quickly. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4 and then Matthew 12, 37. It says, where the word of a king is, these are the scriptures that have blessed me and shaped my understanding of the power of the spoken word. Where the word of a king is, there is what? Power. Except you are not a king, but if you are a king, and the Bible says 5 verse 10 of Revelations, don't go there, just write it. It says that we have been made unto our God, kings and priests, a kingdom of priests, and we shall... How do we reign? Remember, I've taught you, dominion mandate. One of the ways that we legislate is through the power, the, our legislature through words. For where the word of Joshua Selman is, there is power. Where the word of anybody in Koinonia who has an understanding. That means if I see things happening in my life and I don't like, what is the first thing to do? Please talk to me. What is the first thing to do? Listen, listen. Don't let anybody make you feel these things are basic. No, you didn't create the realm of the spirit. You came from there. Anybody that is born and says, I will not eat food the regular way. I want to live my own way. Except you have caught the revelation of being a breatharian. Just know that you are going to die and die. You will die and you will shrink and die like Somalian children. The authorized way is that you continue to eat. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified like a court of law. There is a spiritual court, right? The realm of the spirit works on a legal basis. He said, for by thy word, as easy as salvation is, it takes words to impart the life of Christ to you. The word is near thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth, the word of faith that we preach, right? Romans 10 verse 8 to 10. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. So when you are condemned, who condemned you? It's not really the, your neighbor. No. No. You only attracted to your life what your words made. I refuse to speak negative about myself. I refuse it. 
you will never hear me say anything sarcastic about myself I love myself I, I think it was school of ministry students I was teaching and I was telling them that these people that hang themselves it has been a wonder for me for many years even if I were not born again I won't hang myself no I love myself passionately hang myself no I may quarrel myself I may challenge my body to hang to go and stand on a rope and just tie myself no by your words you are justified by your words you are condemned Isaiah 43 verse 26 then we go to numbers 14 28 and then just two more and we're done I just felt like speaking to us about words by the Spirit of God because many believers are becoming careless we speak anyhow and we don't mind and we keep programming things that destroy us and then we say it doesn't matter it does matter brothers and sisters everybody who worried everybody who strives for mastery must do so lawfully we don't invent the rules we find them out it's an ancient part and we walk in it isaiah 43 and verse 26 he says the b part he said declare thou that thou mayest be justified how do you justify yourself so how does the sick justify himself I'm healed in the name of Jesus yes there might be pains but I decree and declare by his stripes I am healed now when you are saying this you see a lot of emojis look at you and say you are still a baby Christian until one day as matured as you think you are the devil is not a fool he will just allow pride to reach the highest point and sweep you one day in a way that you won't believe I speak over my life I speak over coin Koinonia is planted. Bible says, they that be planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, he said they shall be fat and flourishing. Many of us used to do it before, but now that we are becoming men of God, we are throwing it away. Get back. It is the childlike principle that has lifted ordinary people to become mighty. If I tell you I don't speak the word, I'll be lying. I speak the word. Shabakatonia. Joshua Selman, you are blessed. You are blessed i have a little blackboard with scriptures i recite those scriptures when i'm praying and god did extraordinary things through the hands of joshua selman so that handkerchiefs and aprons you don't wait till you see the result it is the words that command the results in the name of jesus i declare wealth and riches are in my house durable riches i decree and declare i shall not die I'm exempted from the arrows that fly by day, the noisome pestilence. People like Pastor Chris will say, keep, how, how does he say it? I, 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 thank, you. thank you. Keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Do it, oh. Do it like that. That's how it works. Believe me, that's how it works. You don't speak once and keep quiet. Listen, if I speak and I say in the name of Jesus, any spirit oppressing anybody and people are outside there, why can I not speak and say in the name of Jesus everywhere my destiny helper is? By the favor of God, come. That you saw it in the Bible is no guarantee that it will happen in your life. You must speak. Speaking is so important to the point that they had to shut the mouth of Zechariah so that he would not speak nonsense. If he had spoken, he would have altered John the Baptist's destiny. Numbers 14 28. Very interesting scripture. I found this scripture during a retreat. Numbers 14 28. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, not as you desire quietly, as you have spoken in my ears. Question Where was the ears when you were speaking? Did the ears come near your mouth? So while you were blasting and saying in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I decree and declare, oh grave, where is your sting? Oh death, where is this and that? And you are prophesying and you are speaking and you are saying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have a job. The Lord grants me favor. I may not have an uncle, I may not have an auntie, but in the name of Jesus, God raise helpers. The Bible says God is bringing his ears down and is hearing. He says, as I, you have spoken in my ears, so will do not to your neighbor, to you, to you, to you.
Isaiah 44 verse 26. Isaiah 44 verse 26. Isaiah 44 verse 26. Talking about the Lord. It says, He that confirmed the word of his servant. Confirm. Meaning you speak and go. Let me tell you something. And perform the counsel of his messengers. I want to teach you something about faith. Look up. Get any of my teachings on faith. Let me teach you something about faith. You see, Pastor Kong. Satan has lived very long in this realm. Believers, hear me. Let me speak to you. Satan has lived very long in this realm. And he understands that man out of the assistance of the spirit has one limitation. It's called our humanity. And part of the components of our humanity is that we can be wary. Is that true? Remember the Bible says the keeper of Israel, you know, doesn't sleep, doesn't slumber. But men sleep and they can slumber. Are we together? So this is what he does. Satan knows that your eyes, your optical eyes, your ears, all of these things control your perceptions, hence your convictions. And so what he does is he, he makes sure that perpetually before you is an awareness of your limitation. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Listen to me. So while you are praying, in the middle of hot prayer, the devil just comes in and says, where's the husband? And you would think it will enter you because you are in the spirit. It will just enter you and you say, oh God, am I not a beautiful lady? What is all this? You see, he has brought you back to his realm. The Bible says to walk in the spirit. Let me tell you what to do when that happens. That's a sign that you, a reaction is happening in the spirit. Every time you make such a proposition, please help that lady. That is a sign that something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? I remember the time when God showed me the vision of Koinonia. We're about to start. I saw overflows. Remember? I, I said I saw people coming from other cities, other places. That was what I saw. As at that time, they had not even expanded CGC. I remember when I was praying and I was going to go and announce it. While I was praying, 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 there came that voice of doubt again. Don't think it doesn't happen to me. No. Most people will lie to you and say it doesn't happen. It's a lie. It happens to everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That while you are praying and the devil says you now want to disgrace yourself. And you have not even gotten a venue. They have not given you anything just because God showed you CGC. You now want to make a stupid statement. But the Bible says the spirit of faith has a character. It speaks. It doesn't wish and hide. No, no, no. It speaks. Kabakoto sakatayada. The spirit of faith, it speaks. Speaks. Oh, let me, let me play it safe. When, it, when the answer comes, so that I won't be embarrassed. Question. Whoever takes the glory should take the shame. Every time you speak, you put pressure on God's integrity. Lord, I take your word and I shout it. Let them hear. So that if it does not happen, they, no, 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 no. I can't give you the glory and take the shame. Many of us here, we have been threatened by our physical circumstances into silence. Let the redeemed of the Lord not whistle. Say so. Say so. I say it all the time. I stand before my mirror, Joshua Selman, you are anointed. You are rising from glory to glory. Superior dimensions of the anointing. The favor of God is upon you. Sometimes I'm listening to Koinonia message. And while apostle is prophesying, I'm there in my house kneeling down and listening. Because they are two different people, I tell you. And I listen, I listen to apostle's message. I listen to his message more than many of you here. I can sit down and claim because I'm the one ministering and never be blessed from it. There is no koinonia message I've not listened to. Not for clarity and administration. God is my witness. I stand before him in your presence. Lift up your hands and I'm on my knees. Sometimes I play miracle service messages all while I sleep. And I have strange encounters. Don't think this thing we're just faking it. You don't walk this thing. It will never work. God is not a herbalist. 
are we together sometimes i carry maybe benny Hinn message or something i'm playing and in the sleep it continues mysterious encounters where you wake up the devil will say pastor alpha you have been prophesying for two weeks you to reason and you say no sir this is what many of us do god but it's true now see if you if you don't stop getting embarrassed by the absence of your result you will never walk by faith are you hearing what i'm saying this shame shame believers hear me i'm speaking to you by the spirit this shame consciousness of looking like a fool while awaiting your manifestation every miracle you see will risk taken by faith Lord, I thank you. Nations are coming. This ministry is rising. Oh, you are talking too much. Thank God I'm not talking to you. Lord, you who I'm talking to, you know me. I, come on, please. Don't go and shout in somebody's house. It's not your house. That's why the Bible says, close your door. Enter your room. Close your door. Talk to your father. There may not be money now. But in the name of Jesus, Father, I'm a tither, I'm a giver. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. Jakatabata. And while you are speaking, the Holy Ghost just says, dance for one hour. Aha, uh aha, -huh. uh -huh. the word has come. And you put one hot Igbo high praise. Hot high praise. You may not know how to sing well, she can sing for you. You know those, those, those wonderful Igbo sisters. And you are dancing. Apostle, I can't dance. Dance anyhow. It's an instruction. You dance like David danced. And while you are dancing, all of a sudden, in that foolishness of faith, the God I serve, who takes the weak things, the foolish things, is working a miracle. You see, let me tell you this. Spiritual people must be childlike. Not childish, childlike. We are too matured for results. All this big manism in the presence of God. No, sir. Are we together? Yes. You must speak. You get up and you have a bad dream. You are lying down and one spirit comes to sleep with you and oppress you. And you get up and you say, Kai, this thing has happened again. No, sir. Jeketos katabarakotosia. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that I've been raised with Christ. And the devil says, didn't the spirit know while you're there? Just keep it. Keep at it. Satan is a coward. When he looks at, let me tell you something. When you are bold enough, you will resist him and I promise you he will flee. Is God speaking to us? We have been wasting words. The words that are supposed to be used for edification, we use that energy for gossip, for backbiting, for speaking words of unbelief. Pastor Alpha, that, that, that prayer we prayed that time, Shemi, you prayed it too. Let's be honest. Uh, not that I'm saying there's no faith to it. That's not what I'm saying. But is it really working? Just don't, you don't need to let nobody know. Just whisper it to me. That's unbelief. That thing you did is unbelief. Because you are trying to play games with God. Look, if you are in this thing, enter it and stay there and die in it. If you are not in it, then don't fake it. I'm a talking spirit. Truly I talk. Not talkativeness. Reduce half of the time we use jumping around and talking stories and talking nonsense. Go back to the secret place. Kalabota Skaliadash. This family is a family of peace. This is my husband. This is my wife. We love ourselves. No demon from anywhere is coming to scatter us. You call your child. Daddy thinks you carry him. Say, no, 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 I'm a priest now. This is not daddy. Bring your head. Shatos katabaradaba. Let him just be playing around the head or cry. Leave, leave him there. Don't feel sorry for him. Pray. You get up and walk around your house. Dr. Paul Enenche was saying something. They are, the Lord's garden that they are building now. He says almost every day he goes there to speak and build. Just the zinking of it. The, the roofing of that place is six million dollars. Six million dollars to a 70,000 capacity seater. It's not just ritual. He will go there quietly in the night at his level and status. Jakatabada. 
Lord, you have given the instruction. Let those who will publish it come. The Lord gave the word. I pray over Koinonia. Lord, thank you. Financial helpers. Don't just say favor is happening automatically. No. Lord, there are men and women who will bless me every service. I pray that prayer. I'll be honest with you. Lord, I am serving you in truth. And the Bible says, He that ministers to you in carnal things. Lord, I expect favor. I'm a receiver with thanksgiving. I receive grace. You have a troublesome tenant. Someone who is disturbing you and making life easy. Instead of fighting physically, I've taught you spiritual intelligence. Shakatabata. Lord, this woman is making life com uncomfortable for my children. In the name of Jesus, I make decree. I'm a man of peace. I declare my borders are peaceful. Even God, who quickened the dead and collects, magnetizes, attracts things that be not as though they were. This is not positive confession. This is creation. 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 We are going to speak. Are you ready to speak? Please rise up on your feet. Let's close for tonight. Rise up on your feet. Brothers and sisters, I want you to believe these things that I teach you. These are the keys. These are the keys that produce the results we desire. These are the keys. I want you to lift your voice in one minute. Our time is gone. Just lift your voice and thank the Lord for this word you have received tonight. Bless you, Pastor. power for your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to open your mouth in one minute. I know we're teaching on the gifts, but let's start with words. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to make decrees. Don't let the devil tell you anything. Open your mouth. Don't be silent. Make decrees. It says, declare thou that he might be justified. Speak over the anointing in your life. Speak over your ministry. Are you prophesying? Speak over your marriage. Speak over your destiny helpers. Cancel every negative word over your life. Nullify the scorching tongues of men. Pronouncements, conclusions that have come by men. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My God, you anoint my head with oil. You anoint me with favor. You anoint me with grace. My cup runneth over. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. Koinonia rises as a shining light. Ever brighter, ever brighter to the perfect day. No weapon fashion against me. No weapon fashion against this ministry shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me shall fall in judgment. Declare, declare. I decree and declare. I am planted in the house of God. I flourish in the courts of my God. I am fat and flourishing. The abundance of the earth is delivered unto me. Everything works for my good. Everything works in my favor. Men arise to help me. Men arise to support what I represent. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord makes me a blessing. I remain a blessing. I remain a blessing. 
in the name of Jesus rising ever brighter growing in the anointing growing in illumination ministry expanding on the left and on the right in the name of Jesus Christ the purposes of Christ being established through koinonia I decree and declare all that God has given me is blessed I and the children that God has given me we are for signs and wonders signs and wonders I enjoy abundance I enjoy supplies don't be tired don't let the devil deceive you that what you are saying is not sending a signal in the realm of the spirit I'm fruitful on every side in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of revelation is upon me I have understanding I have understanding I have the mind of Christ the love of God is at work in me it's my year of triumph I prophesy thanks be to God who causes me to triumph is my year of triumph in the name of Jesus Christ no death I have no business with death in the name of Jesus Christ I walk in dominion I walk in grace Hallelujah. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. It's my confession. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. One more time. Hey, I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. Just the voices. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know. One more time. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Listen. Carry this attitude back. Don't allow those who speak and say you are talking, you are not serious. No worry. Thank God this race is personal. Do whatever you believe and leave me alone. If my talking is too childish and too, no problem, let me continue being foolish and talk my way into my destiny. Listen, hold on. Don't allow people, hear me. Hear me, Koinonia. Don't allow anybody emotionally blackmail you. When you are practicing the word of God, don't allow anybody make you feel please what is all this childish thing this is how kings reign this is how people legislate I will never stop speaking hallelujah keep standing our time is gone please don't miss next week's ah uh, next week is um, the graduation of our school of ministry students hallelujah so it's going to be the week afterwards hallelujah before i take the altar call it's a very important announcement as you know our som graduation is one of the major ministry activities we're happy this is the fifth step of our students and we are very very proud to be releasing them the largest set so far praise the lord i want you is 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 another miracle service on its own um so I want you to come early. Please come. If you can come uh, from 5.30 or 5.45, no problem, so that we can start. There's a lot to do. There are many of them. Please, please make sure that you are here. And let's, let's celebrate and let's trust God. Invite your loved ones, those who are following, listening from all over. You can follow. We'll still 
those online you can still connect with us hallelujah now i have to do this i felt so bad because of the miracle service i couldn't make an altar call and i tell you i've been feeling guilty from sunday till now not not guilt like condemnation but it's just been in my heart i had to ask god for forgiveness i don't know how many times so we're going to make an altar call now if the lord started convicting you right from sunday and then with the balance of what has happened today there are people here inside outside overflow one two by the road those following online i want to give you an opportunity to make jesus lord of your life our time is gone so you will have to be fast and there are others who have one time surrendered their hearts to the lord but for some reason things went out of balance and you're saying lord i return sincerely and truly if you're coming from outside i want you to please run wherever you are inside here outside just make it here quickly let's honor them we have two minutes for this we have two minutes for this god bless you clear the way for them they are coming god bless you god bless you if you came for the miracle service and the lord told you we we're supposed to come out here for the altar call run quickly 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 there are people coming from outside encourage them and clear the way for them please quickly run to jesus our time is up our time is up overflow one two Apostle, I'm shy. Don't be shy. Hell is real. Run quickly. Quickly. Jesus is Lord of your life. He wants to make meaning out of your life and destiny. And you are here. You are saying, Apostle, I gave my life to Jesus one time. Keep coming. God bless you. Run, run and come. Apostle, can I come and rededicate my life to Christ? You're more than welcome. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. You are invited. Join them and be sure. Join them and be sure. Come quickly. Hallelujah. I was told I was born again when I was small. Join them. Join them. You, you are obviously not born again. Please join them quickly. Join them quickly. You don't impart salvation. It's a personal affair. Join them quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, um, ladies and gentlemen, for this bold decision. I know that many of you have come acknowledging the lordship of jesus i want to lead you in a prayer and i want you to believe lift your right hand and say this after me you're not reciting a poem this is a miracle happening there are people coming from outside please can you run the sister coming run gentlemen please ushers clear the way for them so that they would hurry up say after me lord jesus i love you i believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin Tonight, I have heard your word. I make you Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare from tonight that I am a child of God. The spirit of the Lord is within me. I receive the grace to live a victorious life. In Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for. Thank you for the grace for these ones to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will bless you, lift you, and honor you in Jesus' name. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.